got three viewers all right okay everybody welcome this is commander x we are live from sunny santa cruz california and i am here with keith McHenry, the founder of the global movement known as food not bombs there's the keith himself Say hello to all the hey, viewers everyone. out there, Keith. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so what we're doing is we're getting ready to walk down to the bench lands. There's Keith. Hold on. we got to show. show. So Keith, is, we'll, he'll, he'll be mayor for food. Mayor of Santa Cruz. They have an election coming up. And so we're encouraging everybody to write Keith McHenry's name in on the ballot, do a write-in campaign. So he will be mayor for food. And if elected, he promises to what, Keith? Abolish the office. That's what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna office. we're gonna let Keith answer his phone real. No, he 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 muted it. So what we're doing now, guys, is we're walking down to the Benchlands, which is the the hugest encampment of homeless people I have ever personally seen in my life. Hey, David, how's it going? Um, it goes on for damn near a mile along the San Lorenzo River here in Santa Cruz, oh, California. Right. A very uh, yeah. wealthy so uh, on enclave of uh, mostly here, mostly te lot technocrats lot from Silicon Valley that live here. <laughs> the president of Google lives here. Um, yeah. And so it's a very rich and very wealthy community, and they have That's this good. gigantic so, so homeless encampment that kind of reminds me of Calcutta, India, if you ask me. Up. Um, and they're getting ready to get evicted. And so later on this evening, they're going to have a meeting of the union, the homeless union. And we're going to stream that as well later on. But since Keith was going down to the bench well, lands this know, afternoon, I thought that we would do a, I, I thought that we would do a quick live stream from we're down there and a, show you guys the extent of this camp. It has to be probably 500 and people. So um, living in this you encampment know, and their plan the city plans to evict them months. soon um, the So yeah, man, we're gonna I'm go gonna take a look man we're gonna Walk down there as soon as Keith gets off the phone. We're gonna give a, get a quick interview with him And ask him about the history of this encampment but they're, also they're, on they're, Thursday, what? guys, uh, will be the 900th day that Food Not Bombs has been feeding here in Santa Cruz continuously. Can we got a me? break. They're going to have a little concert at the feed and everything yeah, to celebrate. Yeah. And we'll do a live stream then on Thursday. So once again, just to that recap, sucks, we'll do this stream now live from the Benchlands. Yeah, I'll then we're to gonna do a, a, yeah, another stream later that. this evening for the uh, <laughs> yeah. the meeting of the uh, homeless union here in Santa Cruz that Keith founded, and then we're going to yeah, uh, have another phone. stream yeah, on Thursday, <laughs> uh, a concert to celebrate the 900th day of uh, okay, cool, cool. feeding Great. here in Santa Cruz. So Keith, you're a busy man. Yep. So tell me about uh, this encampment. When did it start? Uh, the particular one here is like a little over two years old. Um, it was uh, going to, well, it's actually even longer ago than that, but then the, the uh, holiday evictions was Christmas two years ago. And we blocked it physically, um, blocked the cops from pushing people out, and that gave us enough time to file a, um, a, a temporary restraining order, which we did. And then we were able to um, block them from being evicted from up here where they're putting this fence up. And then um, they moved down to the bench lands and they've been down there where we're going ever since. Like when you were, um, so you were, we were live streaming the beginning of being down there. And um, so that's pretty So that show that I did, uh, you, you, Keith, you're speaking about that show I did uh, over a year ago, uh, which caused the United States government to request my extradition. Correct. Here we go. Okay, yeah, hopefully he's got a better phone this time. Oh, yeah, that's a lot better. Cool. All right, guys, so that's a little brief history of this encampment that we're about to yeah, go check out. And this is uh, the upper part of San Lorenzo Park. We can see in the distance there, you can see the restrooms for the encampment. We're going to go in another way. This is the fencing that they're beginning to put up now in anticipation of the eviction. So they're taking this beautiful park and they're already putting up this, uh, this steel fencing to try to prevent anybody. I guess that means rich yuppies too are not going to be able to come in here 
to uh, to be a part of this. The chat is open, guys, but be patient with me. It's real sunny out here. I can so. barely see my screen, and I'm trying to mm -hmm. keep up with Keith here. So you can see here where they've got the poles set up for more fencing in anticipation of the upcoming eviction. They're starting to put these uh, metal poles up to get ready to start fencing whole sections of this beautiful park that runs along the San Lorenzo River here. Here's some more of the fencing. They've got the duck pond fenced off. God forbid somebody would want to go sweeping with the ducks, right? I don't even think there's any ducks anymore. But in the old days, that was a duck pond with lots of... Yeah, I guess there's a few ducks over there. I think I see them in the distance. So they're going to fence off the duck pond. They've already got it fenced off pretty much. So that's the plan is to put fencing up all, around all these sections of the park in order to try to keep the uh, the homeless people from accessing and anybody really I mean wouldn't just be the homeless people anybody from accessing these sections of the park and now we kind of see the beginning of we can see some here we'll just give you a close shot hold up Keith wait up for a second wait up for a second Keith slow down hey Keith slow down so there we can see a little bit of it there <laughs> I'm with Food Not Bombs! I'm with Food Not Bombs! The goal of the meeting is to um, uh, make I'm sure... I'm with the Homeless people, Union. Uh, I'm on your side. You know, do we have some kind of effort of organizing around the... the uh, Thank you. ...keeping that people can just kick into the streets? And either possibly having... Um, you know, you know, so tomorrow is a city council meeting where we're going to discuss kicking everybody. Do you want to hand out some of the flyers, Keith? And um, now, I, in a bit, I'm going to be doing that, um, but not right this second. Hi, hi. So, um, How are you doing today? Be real interesting. Hey, Good. So, Good. oops, here, I got a guy. I'm going to have to hand a flyer. Um, hey, Paul, I got a flyer for you. So, you so this is the Benchlands encampment, guys. It's a terrible defense, but at least they moved it back. There you go. Is and that what they the did? Tonight. did? Did they move it back? I, no, no, they haven't moved it back. They've, no, they, well, it was right next to the... Right next yeah. To, and then, so they moved it back a few feet. Yeah, so they could get the uh, toilets in there for temporary. So, yeah. yeah. How you doing? Okay, good, good. Hanging in here, you know, Commander X. Hi. It's good to meet you. This is, this is I am Commander X. So yeah. Well, I, you got out. I did, yeah, sir. Finally. Yeah. Hey, hey, welcome back. Well, well, thank you. So thank you very much. It's good to be free. And you can see I'm rabble rousing already. You're, I'm you're, live streaming. You're occupied. This, but, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of yeah. like occupied, but a little bit different. But bigger right, and more permanent. Yeah, we couldn't build structures during occupy. We tried. Can I put you on camera? Is it okay? I'm live, so. Yeah, it's kind of like a frontier town, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's what it reminds me of. And some of them are pretty well uh, yeah. organized. Oh, was, it's, it's beautiful so, down there. I, I heard that some of them are quite tidy and lovely inside. Many of them are tidy. Yeah, lovely. I'm sure they're not all, yeah. but, you know, but some of them, yeah. it's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's pretty. Well, Take care. Good Take to see you. you. Welcome back. Yes, okay. yes. So I'm going to do, um, Chris, is I'm going to go to the bulletin board and put the Okay, let's go. Up. That way I can stop. We're, we're on our route, but you can, <laughs> guys can sort of see the extent of this. So, yeah. you know, so, you can see the footbridge over there. And then we're going to go all the way up to the head of it where there's a, a main sort of central gathering area and a bulletin board to put some flyers up. And then over here on this side, you can see the poles that they're putting up for the fencing where they're going to fence these whole swaths of this park are going to get fenced off. So they're already preparing for the eviction. What a crazy situation. So. We've been working on it relentlessly, so yeah. it must be good. Yeah, it's incredible. It's completely fucked the government up because, you know, we for forced this, this on them, and now they have nothing they can do. Hi, you guys. Hello. So uh, that's really funny. <laughs> and they, they really are in a quandary. As to what to do about this, you know, they get there, they, and so tomorrow night, at, or tomorrow afternoon, we don't even know. The woman that's supposed to tell me never contacted me, but um, the have some idea of the, uh, you know, what the, the so you can see that this is not an encampment of just tents. There are structures in here. Some of them quite elaborate. 
<laughs> I mean, these are these are tiny homes. This, this is this is more uh, akin to something like Calcutta, India, where you have out of here. you know, is what they're going to talk ghettos, about. Essentially, tomorrow. ghettos. So it's like really insane, really completely insane. You know, home home built ghettos. So. <laughs> what a trip! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Correct. About the people they're dealing with. So there's no way pets in here. Kind of exactly. People are living And we lives invited them in, to last week's community. meeting. And I uh, went, went to their meeting and invited them to the meeting and blah, blah, all that. And no, they, none of, nobody showed. Uh, so that's really crazy. Hey, Troy, can you put this poster up on your board? Yeah, here. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Thanks. Okay, great. Cool. Yeah, and then we got... Here, what's that? Yeah, because uh, Troy's running a, a little operation down here that's helpful. And this, are you going to hand these out to people? Does he feel like talking about it? Uh, yeah. You feel like talking about it for a second? What do you do? Yeah, you want to go to doctor and he just called me. Yeah. Over. Yeah, okay. Cool. I'll talk to you later, maybe. Yeah, we'll see you in a bit. Great. Okay. Cool. So, um, I thought you got my secret there. No, that's what. Yeah, yeah. Right in a second, I'm just physically handing them out. Okay, Troy, we'll see you in a bit. And he has some tax for his bulletin board, so he's going to put it on, on there. So, in fact, I'm going to have to come down and do it again, I'm sure. Because so, we've been walking for a second here, yep, as so. you can see. So what we're going to do is, what, is yeah, we'll enormous. start to do the real hand out Probably the flyers once we're done. Darn close to a kilometer, at least, so, would be uh, my guess. <laughs> Maybe uh, longer than a kilometer, okay. actually. You know about tonight's meeting? I'm still thinking metric mostly because I've been living okay. in Mexico and Canada for the last uh, 10 years. That's so. what we do, man. It's been really intense. Maybe not quite a mile long, but it's definitely close oh, to a couple God. of kilometers. So. so, let me see. And it goes back. We'll look back. You can see back, and this is just yeah, like this was all a park in the in the years gone by. Yeah, this was San Lorenzo Park. This was all green grass. And so here we are at a sort of central structure here that appears to be sort of like the hub of organization. We have a bulletin board. I mean, that's like a real door and whatnot. Yeah, and you can see he's a union member. Yeah, and see, he's got the sign over here for the union. Where? That's right over there. Oh. Yeah. Cool. So did you put your flyer up? Button. Did you do it? Huh? Did you put one up? He he took it. Troy took it. This is his house. Oh, oh, oh. So we have to hope that he comes back. Um. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, I was a friend of mine in prison, and I had to take the call. That's why I couldn't. He can't call me back unless I, you know, that was. The, so talk a little bit about Thursday. What's happening on Thursday? What is what is that, and what does it represent to you? On Thursday, I have no idea what's going on on Thursday. Nine hundred days. That's Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Okay. Wednesday. Talk we about Wednesday. Wednesday is the 900th day in a row that we've been serving food to people in Santa Cruz, California, because all the soup kitchens quit on March 14th, 2020. And if somebody was going to eat, uh, they had to eat with us. So that's when we started serving every day. And so we've been out there every day for 900 days on Wednesday, um, August 31st. And you're going to feed again. We do it every day. It'll be yeah, every day. Yeah, and so you're going to do a little celebration maybe? Have a little party? Yeah, we're going to have a concert uh, on the 900th day. We'll send out press releases. Are we invited to stream that? And everybody can stream can, it. All it's right. really fun. Cool. And we do these free concerts all the cool. time. That sounds cool. Yeah. Look how long this is, guys. So we've been walking for a minute now doing this little errand for Keith. And we're looking back now on the way we, we just came. And that's how long. That's what 500 people live in rough looks like. Oh, look at this. Now, this is my kind of style here. Look at this. Here, we've got a solar power station. Hey, everybody. We've got a, uh, another meeting tonight. Uh, look at that. That's gorgeous. That's got to be a few kilowatts anyway of power right there. You're welcome. On anonymous uh, in cities. 
anonymous wind cities anonymous Hello. twin cities oh i'm sorry okay it took me a second to see in the sunlight everybody. thank you very much we're very happy to share it with you cool look um, at the we love i love that the audience can interact with us so oh, he, somebody's thanking us for doing this That's so, beautiful. Okay. so these are the solar panels here what do you know about this power station keith this is my kind of audience this oh, thing here a lot of power stations throughout here oh wow so Look, we got another one over there. I think that's a solar panel over there. This looks like a bike, a bike, a bicycle hospital over here where they uh, repair and work on bikes. Some good work going on here. Some more pissers and shitters. The ever-present law enforcement. So meeting tonight at the Resource Center for Nonviolence across from Paradox in about two hours. You guys have snacks or tea? Tea? Um, I guess we should do. We should do that. Yeah, you know what? I, actually, yeah, it's a little really difficult because there's some logistical problems with that, but we'll figure something out. Tea and chips and salsa. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We'll do our I'm best, ma'am. Shanoa. I'm Commander X. And what? you know about Commander X. Commander X. Yeah. You know about our meal you know at the town clock every day. I keep forgetting about it. Yeah, it's every day, three okay. uh, noon to three. It's but three. actually, we're probably still there. There's very little food, right? We're the only ones to do it. I was like so hungry this year. I lost weight, so thank you. Bottom of my heart, really thank people. Really awesome. Beautiful. They should turn that into like the grassy park, that little area. Isn't that nice? Yeah. I think that scary little stack yeah. Uh, yeah. Put like a fence up so you can't see mm -hmm. the road. It'd be great, right? <laughs> 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 well, we like to, well, we like to see the road because that's, that's why we can speech. get people to support us. Oh, the road, yeah. yeah. But, but uh, and then that, it's funny about that sculpture, yeah. Oh, I know. And I'm friends oh, with yeah, the, the woman <laughs> who. Husband designed it. So there's a lot of controversy. Yeah. Yeah. Come and bring friends. What's this about? So, so what? What are you talking about? No, I'm not. Um. So what it is is they're gonna. Uh, they're talking about getting rid of everybody out of this camp. But there's no place for anybody to go. Okay. So they've got like actually about 25 locations for people to go for everybody in the whole park. Okay. Well, but, but they're not yeah. yeah, no, 25 total people out of this park will have a bed to oh. sleep in a, where they have to catch a van at 8.30 at night if that's they want to get back. That's another dead armor. Yeah. 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 That's so unnoticed. I don't know why they do that. Why that's why we want, so that's what we want to have the meeting about so yeah, we can have it. And what we, we, we want to hear from is, is you yeah. folks and what yeah. you guys think of this. Yeah. Yeah. This is you guys. Did you want to? If she's willing, yeah, are you, you willing to talk for me? I, I have a live show yeah. going. Yeah. Um, I like, I would be at the armory, but it's the bus thing that, that ruins yeah, it for like, me. Yeah, okay. You're okay. Being uh, if you're okay. Yeah, we'll over there, yeah. Let me see if you my friend. If we go down there, I will. Yes, ma'am. Okay, cool, cool. So we're going to talk to one of the residents here at the bench in just a second, guys. I don't know. Cool. Still reminds me of Calcutta, India. This is crazy. Yeah, so this is the bike area. Um, yeah, we're really seeing only... kind of a bike, bike hospital almost. That's yeah, very yeah. cool, man. That's very cool that they... Uh... Probably a lot of people don't think it's a hospital, but a lot of people do. <laughs> Look at how they're working on a wagon and things like no, that. No, I know. It's great. It's great. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Everybody trying to be crafty and trying to get ahead. That's amazing. Yeah, it's just some magical down here. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Take your time. Take your time. You're doing me a favor. So once again, guys, if you're just tuning in, uh, we are live here in the Benchlands Homeless Encampment in sunny Santa Cruz, California. 
a very rich uh, suburban community, mostly technocrats from Silicon Valley and uh, upper middle class people who tolerate this enormous poverty. Hey, at you, John. Good to see you, my friend. Thanks for tuning so, in. So you you made some really good, important comments mm -hmm. about it, which is what would be great to hear. Yeah. You, you, well. you okay doing it right here? No, I don't want it. Just around the top okay. of your body. Sure, sure. Okay, no you. problem. Okay. You have a phone I could check myself in, like a little mirror app or something? Um, you could see it in... in well, phone. she can't. Okay, and okay. she can't if she's on the screen. That's <laughs> really good. I just want to, like, lipstick her. No, 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 you look fine. I just want to ask you a couple of questions. All over, the world. all over the world, we're live now, so, and then we'll put it on YouTube afterwards. That's on your web page, is there? Yeah, it'll be on the web page. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and on Twitter and everywhere. Hey, man. So we're gonna get a chance to we're gonna get a chance to talk to an actual resident of the Bentrans here, and she's gonna ask her a few questions. So this is the San Lorenzo River. It's actually a really beautiful little spot if it weren't for so many people is this good good mm -hmm. for you great, yeah. hi so i'm x and can you tell me just your first name or what you want to be called um it's called and sasha 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 right against the street that's yeah right. no problem my name's chanoa but you can call me sasha huh <laughs> my name's chanoa okay sasha, easier. sasha all right well sasha could you tell me thank you first of all so much for talking to my audience i really appreciate this yeah so uh, we've just walked the entire length of this bench lands encampment here and you live here. Is that correct? No, I spend a lot of time here, but I don't want to sleep in a tent by myself. Just okay. Just because I'm a woman alone. All right. So I kind of walk around at night and then catch little nods in the park during the day. But I definitely spend a lot of time here. A lot of time. So it's, 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 it's for all intents and purposes home. Home. As I know much well. As... I know all the people here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how long have you been doing this routine where you sleep wherever and then you come here during the day? How long have you been in this position? Two years, a year and a half, year and a half. And they're getting ready to the city. We can see we, we filmed all the fencing and everything, that, how they're dividing the park up and putting the fencing up and everything. They're getting ready. Clearly, they're getting ready to make a move on this encampment. Oh, so what that was why it's putting going up I didn't know for sure yeah yeah and so what are your thoughts on the fact that the city has declared that they're going to evict this camp they're going to destroy Honestly, this camp sir, I think that it should be moved I think it's not fit for human dwelling and the dust is really bad and there's lots of rats and um, a little squirrel ground squirrels and that's so many bacteria in the dust if it was a more fit and habitable place I still would probably be for it because it's right in the middle of town and right. um not that I think homelessness is shameful, but I just don't think it's like a really nice first impression because of the way it looks. Like if it was more dignified, like a tiny home village or something, but mostly for me, I think it should be moved just because of sanitation, there's rats everywhere. Um, it's, we don't really deserve okay, but a lot of times there's no water. Allow me to clarify yeah. though, they're not planning on moving it. They're just going to destroy it and, and let everybody sleep in doorways. That's pretty um, much the plan. I don't, what are they saying? They're decreeing like a certain time frame and then you have to leave? Yeah, they're going to come in here and tell you to go. And then as they, as they clear each section, right. that's why they're putting the fencing up. They're so, going to fence off one section after another, after another. They're not going to evict everybody all at once, but they're going to evict in stages. They're going to close the entire encampment. Someone told and me they're, they're going to fence everyone in and send them to the Midwest. <laughs> That's right, they have no right. plan though, and that's what I'm I saying. Mean, I mean, if they were good. gonna give you another piece of land, you'd be happy with that though, right? Well, a better piece of land. We can all go back to live in the woods where we were. If they own the land, they have the right to tell us to leave. Really, it is public land, and I'm a homeless advocate. Like, I'm, I, I think it's really impossible to survive being homeless. It is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Like, people think homeless people are lazy. They work harder than any human being, and so do I. I've ever seen. I mean, we work all day and all night, basically, just to get our basic needs met. And you've been homeless for a couple of years? A year and a half, like this, and then um, two years before that, camping in Felton, which is up in the woods, and that was nicer, but still, humping all the water up, humping all the food up, it's it's a lot of work, but this is just dirty. It needs to be reseeded with grass. They should have an alternate place. You can't just uproot people, and especially elderly, or people who have a lot of stuff, and say, see you later. I think they should give us more time than three days notice. That's not enough. And sometimes they bulldoze, like I've heard on the second day, and they just bulldoze. And I think right. that's not fair. And they're going to destroy everybody's belongings. It's the only things they have to help. survive. If a lot of these people have boarding issues and maybe bring, maybe not someone to help them decide what to keep and what to go, but maybe some able-bodied, let's get this out of here at least, but you don't lose all your stuff or for the older people, you know? Now, I wonder if you would play sort of a little like a uh, game of make-believe with me. Make-believe that I am a government official. I have unlimited resources. I have huge full pockets. I can literally do anything for you that you ask me to. <laughs> 
My question to you is this. What would you need from me to get out of this situation and end your personal okay. um, problem? That's a really good question. Um, that's a really good question. I, I have, I, 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 we're playing a magical game here. I, ha I can do anything you want. I can wave any magic wand. I would what need, would you um, need? A camp that was clean and fit where I felt like I could have a real home base. So like, What no, about a home? You well, wouldn't want me to give you a home? I have like, unlimited I'm resources like, I know, now. I'm going to get to that. So I'm going to do like four realistic ones. I'm going to do like four points. So the first one would be the camp would be habitable. So I felt dignified about myself. I have more self-esteem. No dust, no health hazards. Like we have staff and wounds a lot. Can I can I show? Thing. Yeah. So like um, you know, something on turf maybe, or something on cement, and um, consistent water, consistent soap, showers on site. That's really hard for us. Um, and a person at night to guard the place because as a woman alone, I don't feel safe sleeping alone. So it, and it's the tents for more units. Walking these streets with a cup in my hand, passing by strangers who don't understand that I was a princess, someone's baby before. They can tell by my clothes that I'm not any. Night comes to greet me when the dark closes in. I'm looking for doorways and some box to sleep in. The cold chills my bones and the rain makes me ill. No one would blame me if I take one more. Nobody sees me, I'm lost and alone oh, Mom, how I wish you would come to the phone And talk to your daughter, cause I'm feeling so low I'm scared and confused, and I'm missing you Hide in the shadows, but fear in my heart. I miss you so much, can't believe we're apart. If I had only thought about what I had done, and I was determined, I was right you were. Nobody sees me, oh I'm lost and forlorn Know how I wish you'd just come take me home Cause the light it is fading, and I'm weak and confused And I've never felt so ashamed and Clothes I have on me, they are tattered and worn. My hair it is tangled, ain't been washed in so long. And I know you won't see me, I'm lost to you now. I just wish I could come home for fixing somehow. Nobody sees me, my pride it is gone But the streets do to someone who once was so young Is to take all their goodness, their fun and their charm And give it to someone who would just do them harm Maybe tomorrow the sun will break through And this pain will be lifted by the mere sight of you And you 
you'll tell me you love me and you'll take me away back home to the memories that I think on each day so I'll walk in the shadows and I'll live for today and I'll keep my eyes open and I hope and I pray that you'll come to get me oh, and I'll hear you say you're my little princess I'll take you home stay So, okay, so, so um, we're going to start out. So we're going to start out with uh, Commander X giving a couple of words right now about um, the logistics of the live stream and so on. So cool. Welcome, Commander X. Thank you all so much. Uh, I want to first of all I want to thank everybody for coming out today. You know, um, I've been homeless. I want to make a disclaimer: I'm not currently homeless. But I have been, and I know that your life is full with taking care of yourself and people that you love. So taking a couple of hours out of your time, it's a, it's a real sacrifice. So seeing this many people come out tonight, it's really, really cool. My name is Commander X. Um, I've been an activist for 45 years. Uh, I'm live streaming tonight uh, on Twitch. I'm currently uh, creating content on the internet, all sorts of content. Uh, tonight, it's going to be about you. Um, I recently got out of prison where I did 13 months in federal custody uh, for organizing cyber protests on, in defense of Keith McHenry, uh, Food Not Bombs Chapter in Orlando, and the homeless people here in Santa Cruz. I have been arrested so many times here in Santa Cruz in defense of the homeless community that I can't remember how many times. But going back to the 80s, I've been standing up with you and for you, many cases living right up in the camps. Um, so what I want to say, just beyond introducing myself to you and letting you know what I'm doing, is um, your life is full. I get that. You've got a lot on your plate. You're trying to survive. But I also want to tell you that the only way that we ever get change in this country is through resistance, through pressure, through activism, and through organizing. It's a lot to ask, you know, for people who are hungry, people who are searching for their next meal, people who are worried about whether or not they're going to have uh, a place to sleep tomorrow night. It's a lot to ask, but you've got to do it. You've got to do it because otherwise they will take everything from you. So keep coming to these meetings, keep standing up, keep figuring out ways amongst yourself to organize and to resist, and I promise you that with the large view, I'm 60 years old, okay, 45 years I've been in activism, our country is considerably better today because of that kind of activism. It is a completely different world than it was 45 years ago. Ask, ask the LGBT community, um, you know, ask all kinds of different people, ask the black folks, okay? Is it perfect? No, it's far from perfect, it's awful. Okay? But it is considerably better than it was. So keep doing what you're doing. Keep coming out. Keep trying to activize more of your neighbors and keep coming to these meetings because as far as I can tell, being back here in Santa Cruz after 12 years, this is, this is the best thing, uh, the best way that I can think of that you guys can get change and that you can protect yourself and your loved ones. Thank you very much for letting me be here. Okay, so the, the basic, for, well, I'm Keith, and I'm uh, with Food Not Bombs, and I'm also with the uh, Santa Cruz um, Homeless Union, and the State Homeless Union, and the National Homeless Union. If it becomes an International Homeless Union, I will be part of that, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, the, so, we're, so I'm going to speak a little bit, and then Alicia's going to speak a little bit, and then we're going to have the people from the Benchland speak, and then... After that, um, kind of generally have people speak. Um, 
But we really want to give it the purpose of these meetings is really to give a voice to the people that are being directly impacted by the threat of eviction. And the news of the eviction is all ever changing. Um, I talked to a uh, reporter today who believed that they're going to do, it'll, it'll be all winter long that they're moving people out of the bench lands, you know. And, uh, and then I've heard rumor of t two secret places that they're not telling us about where people might go. Um, we're supposed to find this out tomorrow night. Um, that even is like a, I and mean, Robert might actually know the details of this, but um, um, we're going to meet tomorrow at City Hall at 5 o'clock for a rally because the city manager is supposed to be giving a report. So we know that in his report, um, an item, uh, was it 90 and 91 on the agenda, which could be as early as 3 in the afternoon, but may not be. We do not know this information. I called Sandy Brown a bunch of times to see if I could find this information. She never returned any calls. As, as you know, when you call Sandy Brown, it takes a week or two to get a call back. But um, and she's busy. So, uh, so anyway, so the... Uh, we know so far on the agenda itself, it says that they're going to spend $280,000 on garbage disposal out of the bench lands, and they're going to try to ask for $1 million in homeless service money to be transferred from that to $1 million in restoring the bench lands. So that is a, so we have millions of dollars for things like that, but, and so that is, is, uh, is the basic, Understanding, and they put up a bunch of fences, took down fences, now they're putting up more fences around the duck pond and so on. Um, and we have a bunch of legal strategies that we have been considering. One of the most important things that we could potentially organize out of here is to make sure that we fill the, um, what the, what do they call it now, Overlook, that used to be Gulf Lakes, which used to be some other name. And you can tell by the fact they change the names all the time that they're trying to avoid, that they know that everybody hated it the last time when it was called Gulf Link, so change the name. Maybe they won't know. It's a different, different thing, but it's not. It's even worse than Gulf Links. Gulf Links, which is now Overlook, is the 60 tents in the white gravel by the chain fence next to the armory up by the golf course, which is, and if there are people will speak on that, their experience of how they were urged to go there by Jeremy Leonard, got there, found out that it was not workable, and then moved back to the bench lands. And we had a, the first of these meetings, we had a woman who was so angry at her ill treatment by the staff that she just headed out with her walker and left and moved to the bench lands. Uh, she actually started to sleep outside the bench lands, and the cops kept continually harass her and move her back to the bench lands. So um, that's what we could expect from. So anyway, so one of our ideas is to try to fill Gulf Links and 1220, the two places, with as many people as possible, so that when that would be a, essentially a block to the eviction from the bench lands because they won't have any place to put anybody. So we, anybody that you know is really vulnerable, that might feel comfortable at the, in a tent in the sun and doesn't care that they have to take a van in and out of town, encourage them to take a spot there because right now I believe there's about 20 spots. It'd be great if all 20 were filled so that when the day came to evict people, they wouldn't have any place to put anybody, therefore it would be a, basically a violation of Martin um, um, versus Boise. And just to give you the broad, so there's a Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals case. If you're an unhoused person, you definitely know about this. Um, and what that ninth, we're in the Ninth Circuit, uh, the Federal Circuit, and it's, they cannot, uh, they have to provide you with an indoor location before they can ticket you for being an unhoused person outside somewhere. So for instance, allegedly, if they're going to not violate 
Martin versus Boise, and they evicted everybody out of the bench lands, then if you were camping on the levee or you know just in front of the post office on the sidewalk, as has happened in the past or something, they really technically should not ticket you and not move you along and tell you to go anywhere because they cannot direct you to an indoor shelter space. So that's the broad concept of the law. Now, city governments, and in fact, the California League of Cities, which has had meetings with the city attorney meetings and city manager meetings and all these kind of meetings like that, they try to figure out strategies to be in compliance with that um, federal law, while at the same time, essentially harassing people, ticketing them, and you know, taking their cars and all those things and not being in violation. So that's one of the things. And the other thing that's on the litigation idea, I'm going to give you like a, we have nothing set in stone, but we're going to do something. One of, uh, because the way they are setting it out tomorrow night at city council, one, we have to see what they're saying. Second, what we think right now, we're working like with the ACLU and our, to, as a, uh, allies to help us in this, although it's going to really be the Union of the Homeless, Food Not Bombs, and the people that live in the bench lands are going to be the plaintiffs. And we're going to do a pro, um, pro se, because that gives us a lot more flexibility and leeway to actually get to the issues at the root of this, whereas attorneys have to be attorneys, and, and uh, it, we think that it's going to be less effective. And um, but we can use their, their ideas. And so one of the ideas is on the first group of people that, so the way that it sort of is standing now is on the uh, Renta Forte Creek end of the camp. They would take the first 20, 30 people, one reporter said 70 people from that section uh, and offer them a place at Golf Links or Overlook. And um, and if they don't take it, then tough luck. And if they're caught camping somewhere in the streets because they decided that it was not effective, not something they could do, then they would be ticketed. And that person would then be a very good plaintiff because they, you know, there's legitimate reasons why going to golf links doesn't work for people. Another potential claim to, so then they would fence that area off, and you couldn't allegedly go in that area, and then it would be another section, another section like that, all the way down until everyone's out of, of the bench lands. So that's what one of the rumors is, which we hope we find out more details tomorrow night, uh, tomorrow afternoon at City Council. So that's, uh, so that's where that, that is at. So the, two, the things are, we're looking for plaintiffs, Another issue is to say, for instance, you accept golf links and you're in that group. You get up there and then there will be stories from this room which will confirm this. You get up there and they somehow don't like your attitude. And so they just suddenly put all your stuff like out and you're out of there. And now where are you supposed to go? That was the place you were offered if you left the bench lands but now the place that you went to is kicking you out when you have no place to go. So these are all kind of, the, and that person would be a, a, a very good plaintiff as well. So also when you're living outside and you're desperate for money, there's always a hope that the purpose of the lawsuit is that you get money. That has not been our experience. We don't sue when, from that perspective. We're suing to make sure that everyone has a safe place to live, and that they're not going to be woken up in the middle of the night every night and told they have to pack up and move to some other place. So even that could potentially, even if you don't get ticketed, that potentially could be something valuable for this litigation. That maybe the, their strategy will be not ticket people, but just order people to wake up in the middle of the night and move and go someplace else. So those are some of the issues that we're currently dealing with. I think a large presence tomorrow at the, to show that there is a lot of opposition to just kind of having this weird game.
So, the, and then the la, I think the last thing before I introduce Alicia is so when we sued last time, we got a temporary restraining order that blocked the eviction of the upper level of the bench lands. And then we negotiated with the city and they put everybody down in the bench lands. And then for two years, if you were caught sleeping anywhere that was not the bench lands, they would uh, eventually sweep you from that area <coughs> and send you to the bench lands. So they create, it's a, um, um, created the conditions that are there intentionally. Because during those two years and, and $200 million, they did not provide spaces for the ever-growing number of people in the bench lands. So they had the $200 million, but what did they do with it? They just paid salaries, they paid insurance, they paid rent, they, they gave like 40 pup tents out to the people they were kicking out of Oceana. You know, that's what they're doing with the, we provided under, um, when the emergency relief was happening and there was a half a billion dollars provided by the state of California to buy hotels, we, I funneled repeatedly empty hotels to Robert Ratner at Housing for Health. I would take a picture of it, I would send it to him with the address and the name of how you could buy the hotel from, and he never bought a hotel. So they just took that $200 million and just sent it off to nobody. So to their own pockets, really, or the pockets of their friends, or whatever they do to it. But it, as you know, if you ever lived outside in Santa Cruz, it does not help people who live outside in Santa Cruz. And everyone always wants to know where all these millions of dollars go. And it go, you know, they hired a bunch more consultants. There's a $365,000 consultant, homeless consultant. That Alicia Cool did not get hired for that job. Um, there is uh, several other $200 or $150,000 a year jobs for homeless managers. Um, that's where the money, or the case managers. You probably enjoyed your experience with your case manager um, and how effective that is and how that case manager disappeared by the second meeting, which is completely normal. And you never really, you got a housing voucher, which you held on to for three years and you, to, and you have to get a house. All the normal things, all these things are just what the homeless industrial complex of Santa Cruz and of the United States is all about. And essentially, they collect data on people who live outside, keep track of you, you get a number and all that, if you're willing to cooperate for this dream of getting um, a, a housing voucher, which will allegedly get you housing. Now, the people that have been getting housing that I know of usually get housing frequently in Watsonville. Usually, they lose that housing. With, uh, many people that I've met in the last uh, few months usually don't even survive 30 days. When you look at the Housing Matters sign, 900 people housed, a lot of those people were housed for like 30 days and, and they were had substance abuse problems, mental health issues, whatever, and ended up on the streets. We'll answer your question in a second. And then I want to turn it over to the president of the, of the Santa Cruz Homeless Union, and Alicia Cool, who uh, was out on the streets for the whole pandemic living with her family in an RV, tons of fun. And um, she, so, and then, okay, so do you have a real fast question? Yeah, all right, is, is there some other place in the meeting? A friend made a suggestion and it was pretty creative and weird, but I also thought maybe it was something we could demand. Is there a place to ask that? Question? Yeah, that will be right after the bench lands people okay. tell their stories and then because we rented this place for two hours for that purpose. So first, we, because the people that never get heard are the people that are directly impacted and being forced to move. I think that's, uh, you know, from our perspective, uh, well, nothing okay. about us without us. I was just asking because it's a suggestion that I have for getting people some shelter. Um, we could maybe get a lot of people shelter, and it has to do with putting that demand for it to city council. If we're all going to gather tomorrow, one of the things I would love for the bench people at the bench lands to talk about what kind of demands they would like to make for the city. Okay, that's a good idea. And then you had one brief question over here. Did you have a question or something? Uh, yes. Or just exercising? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, I did have a question it was about the armory spaces. I had read somewhere that they were going to keep five kind of open so that they could always say that there's space and they could always take people out of the bench. I just wanted to bring 
Yeah. yeah, that's like a common scam that has gone on by cities since uh, Martin Bruce is Boise. <laughs> so obviously there's probably, there could be as many as 500 people in the fence lands. Very hard to tell of what, who's an actual resident, who's a guest, who's doing business. Um, but the... Uh, <laughs> 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 So, but but the reality is that does not mean I can answer that. just the fact that you have, you know, yeah. five places. So yeah, just so that you know, everybody in the army was evicted from the army in June, and, and they went to the bench lands. And now those same seventy people have to go back to the the army. But uh, so so. All these little things that you might read about the city saying they're doing this and that, it's just, they're trying to get around, they're trying to, they're doing that so when they go before a federal judge, when they sue them, they can say they've got like these five places up there, so there's always a place for somebody. But there obviously, you have 3,000 people living outside at the minimum in, in Santa Cruz County. What, what Martin versus Boise would indicate if you're gonna follow that as a real law, would be that 3,000 indoor shelter spaces would be available. So they clearly do not have 3,000, um, you know, indoor shelter spaces in Santa Cruz County. So. That's actually kind of what I just appeared to say. And that's the, something we might actually challenge my like on, is that there are several holes in Martin versus Boise, but that is like one challenge right there, is that it does say that if the Shelter capacity is lacking for the entire homeless population that you cannot criminalize those that are sleeping on public property. And so that would mean like everybody, not because you have five spaces, you can go ahead and criminalize everybody. So if they started to do that, we would definitely need to challenge that. Um, I don't particularly have a lot to add to what Keith said. Um, he kind of went over a lot there. Um, we are looking at several different legal strategies. We are in talks with the ACLU. Because of our past um, litigation with the city, they're very careful in how they drove this plan. Um, they know that you would do an immediate injunction. That's typically what we've done in the past. Um, and they kind of know what grounds we would do it on. And so they've written up this plan very carefully to where it says that if they run out of shelter spaces, they'll stop evicting people. And so essentially, if they do that, you know, that, that's great. They're only moving people that they have adequate alternative shelter spaces for. Um, if they do something besides that, that's where we're going to really need to step in um, because that's what we're keeping an eye on. Um, tomorrow's city council meeting will kind of unveil more of that plan. Uh, so far, we've asked several times, you know, what exactly is your start date? When do you plan on moving people? They have not been clear as to a direct start date. Um, so we are waiting on that. Um, Keith did talk about um, like the funds mismanagement. It is true over the past year, there hasn't been a lot of action, you know, case managers helping house people or relocate people. Uh, only when it's talk of closure does the city talk about bringing in case managers and things like that. But over the past year, they have hired a new city manager, a new police chief, and a new homeless advisor. So that's a lot of money. That's where, you know, the money goes. That's extremely disappointing, you know, for all of us that rely on solutions that are not being done. We just keep getting more staffing, you know, more opinions, but really not more answers. And so with that being said, I would invite open mic for discussion, but that's kind of where we're at right now. And we're very closely looking at what angles can we do here if the city does make a mistake regarding litigation? Okay, so now, who from the Benchlands wants to go first? Come on. Blue, do you want to go first? Yes, you do. Okay, Kazoo goes first. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My real name is Kazoo, but I go by Mike Whiteside. I'm from Lodi. Uh, I ended up here two or three years ago in Santa Cruz because a 
a bad thing, but we're singing. That doesn't matter. We're not talking about peace so much. But I live in the bitch lands. And I used to live in a, the parking lot of Lot 27, where we used to serve food. God, they, the cops figured out some way to arrest me for something. And then they said, every night they come in like at 12 to 2 or whatever. Get out of here if you're here. We're going to arrest you because, you know, you, you, you've been in trouble before. So I'd leave. I'd be scared to death. But then when I find, I was scared of the bitch lands. So I finally got to the bitch lands. It was paradise. It was Literally paradise. I thought, oh, they're going to kill me. They're going to do this. Nobody did anything but love me. And again, you people here, I love you like my brothers and sisters because we all would fucking be here if we didn't have to be here. So we're here. So let's make the best of it. And he said they're going to run me out of here. That's fucked up. But they are going to. They will run us out of there because... There's too much non-control down there. You know, they're like, they do what they want, maybe a little bit, but we're all controlled. And what's going to happen is they're going to get us in a little community thing, and then they're going to like, you smoke cigarettes. I don't smoke cigarettes. You smoke cigarettes. You do any kind of drug. You do any of this or that, that. You, you can't be here. So we're going to move you from the bitch lands to some environmental health place. If you smoke cigarettes, you're going to leave. If you do any kind of drug, you're going to leave. Why are we on the beach lands? Because we smoke cigarettes. We didn't do things maybe perfectly right. Things are perfectly good down there. But homeless people, we didn't, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know how to explain it, but we didn't do things maybe right. We didn't do things wrong or something. But we're here, let's enjoy it, let's be the best of things, but they're not doing that in Santa Cruz here. They're making us like, we're vicious people. Because we're homeless? There's a million people, well, excuse me, two or three hundred down there, maybe four or five hundred of us down there, but two or three hundred of us don't do anything wrong. We live there, we eat, we don't have a good job. Santa Cruz is like, what, three, four thousand dollars a month rent? I don't know if you guys did the numbers, but $15 an hour is the minimum wage now. It <laughs> ain't getting very close to that. So, they're going to put you in a cage, and they're going to say, well, you don't belong in this cage. And they're going to kick you out of the cage if when you go to this one of these places. He's talking about it. I don't know. I don't know not much about that. But they're, they're literally cutting your, cutting your leg off. They're going to I'm gonna put you in this spot. I'm going to cut your right leg off. And maybe you could make it the other spot. No, 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 no. Mr. King or Mrs. King, whoever who he's talking about, years ago said, let's not be homeless. They're not, they're not have homeless people. All they have to do is share a little bit of the peace, not a big part of your wealth, peace, and take care of us. Nobody's great. And I'm not here. Thank you. And I love every one of you here. <laughs> okay, Robert, you may have to come up here. So that we oh, get no, to Yeah, come on. Okay, Blue, come on. Go, Blue, you're up. Come on, everybody, let's come up here. He's got come on. He's got anybody? Okay. <laughs> I just seen Phil Gomez to uh, Bell's Park as we're coming here. I tried to, tried to hide. I don't want to be on TV again because he marked me as a homeless guy, hero. But I've been hearing people from the city every day talking about saying, you need to take the tent down. They don't know I'm in there. I want to come out and I want to rip their heads off. They're saying, you need to leave. Okay, I remember reading eight months ago to Keith. Um, that the city, in their own words, like posted, that it took down on down for 30 days on Facebook and those things, that the city doesn't get paid to help the homes, you have to put to the county. That's in their own words, as I told you before. So, and then I hear these guys, and I'm getting marked and tagged. I lost my vehicle that was registered, everything, still never got in. So it forced me to be down here in a tent, even though I don't mind. I'm like a zoo, I'm this personal. Me, the <laughs> guy, the other thing is, I had to put a tin up over the other end just to kind of take a break. I didn't say that, but it's true. I have 
lot of people down there. I have a friend that works at Grant with me. He made $100,000 a year in a wheelchair. His name's James. Programmer and stuff. He said, because I helped him. I have a couple of people. Last night, I helped a lady who has a tent down by Kazoo and I. As I ride through the parking lot, she's on a bicycle, just killed over. It's not great. So I touch her, try to see if she's alive. I'm like, oh, God. So I go to my tent. I'm like, I'd like to have my friend come back. We got her up. She was in a steady, calm, you know, computer thing. Pull her out of that. So that had been number nine. I'm tired of helping, but it seems like every time I go somewhere, I'm always helping somebody. Well, I'm on fire, bring them back to life. And yeah, when I'm getting tagged, and I hate it because I see the people with the city, I recognize people's phone structure in the face. And I hear a lot of things that I record, of course, to be taken. Um, they really don't want to help anybody. And like I say, I used to make $9,000 a month, but that's beside the point. But now, with my own personal injuries, I have a herniated disc that's here in my back. I sit on my leg, and I worked for 30 years with Granite Rock and Grant. Um, so I'm not just a normal bum, but the other hand, I hate talking to you, but I know these guys, and they know who I know, like the police chief. I went to high school with him, I'm going to say it. I, I, I kicked his butt in high school. That's not good. <laughs> so, you know, that's not good. The number two police chief is my best friend, the Templar Sheriff, his friend, so he knows me as a good person. So I'm on both sides like, oh, great. And then, you know, people always look at me because you know, but everybody's always saying, I know you. No, you don't, but they do. So, but I, I'm a homeless person, and I help everybody who I can. But it kind of sucks because I never got nothing back in my lawn. My car was a 2006 minivan. I mean, beat off the damn thing. Right? I help people, but they took it from me. Never gave me nothing where it went or anything. And I had it registered for so much clothes again, and my other two. So, I hate talking, but I'm here, and I hear the city council people all the time, every day. They get people, today there's a lady, I should have taken a video of her, standing right here, looking, taking pictures of people again. So, they see me, they run, because I chase them. So, that's all I'm going to say for now. I'm already on fire. <laughs> Sometimes they're like, you know, unheard of or, or just out of the ordinary, or but that's Santa Cruz, you know? Um, my name is Jack Brian Rodriguez, and I've been homeless for about two years. Um, I became homeless. Uh, I was living in Texas. I was a worship leader. I was um, a youth leader and uh, helping two businesses. One was a youth, uh, a moving business where we uh, get people from a recovery home that we established there in Austin, Texas, and um, we put them to work, um, moving college students or um, you know um, those you know that, those great old Texan folk. Um, and then the other one was uh, refurbishing homes and starting small, tiny home communities. Um, I'm uh, from California. I grew up here in Santa Cruz, and uh, I was born in San Jose. And um, March uh, 2020, I got a knock on my door. And um, I guess I had a two-year-old warrant from a, a toxic relationship that I had no idea over. I left to Texas to get away from the toxic relationship, and the person I was getting away from um, called an alleged, you know, some 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 charges against me that were false. And because it was a domestic charge, um, regardless if she dropped the charges or if they were false, it, it the DA grabs it and takes it. Um, so for two years, I had this warrant I had no idea over. And it was a hundred thousand dollar warrant, and it made me a uh, fugitive. Um, so in March, for some reason, there was like some upgrade, and I got a knock on my door, and um, I was at, uh, uh, housed in Austin, Texas, in in, in a Travis County um, Police uh, Jail until Santa Clara came and got me, which was fourteen days, 
and they extradited me in Santa Clara, and within eight hours, they released me transient with two ankle bracelets. That was March 7th, and so that was on a Monday. Um, that Saturday was shelter in place. Now I was not only just forced outside, transient with nothing, four states away from everything I had, um, I was outside during a pandemic. I thought it was at like the end of the world. Now I was just the only one outside. I just literally saw tumbleweeds yeah. and like platoons of cops telling everybody to go inside. And I'm like, you know, I can't, you know? And so it really did something to me. Um, um, they told me to build shelter. Cause I, I didn't know what to do. I was gonna break into something, you know? I, like, I thought, I didn't know what was going to happen. I, all I know is they, they were telling me not to be outside. And, um, when they told me to build shelter, uh, I came here. This was my home. And um, I found home here. Um, this is probably the most, uh, the homeless here is the most support group, I've ever, biggest support group I've ever seen. Like you said, there's love here. And I think and we found a community. We found a home. I found a home within the community. So it's very serious to me what happens um, because it's my home. You know, they, they come and they, 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 I don't know what they think they can do when they just like bulldoze or stuff, dude. I mean, like, that's all I had, you know? And um, it's not it's not right. Uh, because they're not just dealing with people who are drug addicts or who are thieves, but they're dealing with people who, who are trying to survive, you know? Um, I, I met a young couple the other day. Um, they were from Phoenix, and they came here to California, and um, they became homeless, and they didn't know what to do, you know? And so um, I accommodated him as much as I, I could, you know, the tent and stuff like that. And I told the guy, you know, this isn't a failure for you, okay? This is the result and the reality of this generation. You know, this is happening not just to you, but to hundreds of people right now. This is what's taking place. So it's not like, you know, last year, sorry, or two years ago, this homeless war against the county. Unit. No, this is what's happening to the youth and to my age group people. You know, it, it's those people who, 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 who were living paycheck to paycheck, lost their jobs and lost their living during the pandemic. And this is the result of it. So um, a solution. And if they gave us any kind of leeway tomorrow or, or decent demands or whatever, or, or requests, or, you know, um, to relocate. Okay, there's property. Um, there was property on the market for seven years. They just took it off. I don't know, but it, it borderline the Pokedex. You know, um, not even trying to touch the Poconips, but hey, the Poconips. I mean, they, they had the, uh, the Homeless Garden Project, which was a good plan, but stopped it because of construction. Construction of a way, uh, um, hopefully it was really important construction because people's lives got stopped. Um, I'd say we pick up there again. Or, you know, um, if for us as the community there in San Lorenzo, we need to show them that they can. And without that, you know, forget, forget their help. I know that we can do it as a team. We can do it ourselves. I mean, if we come together and we organize ourselves and we come up with a plan, there's enough finances down there. There's enough finances we can run, we can we can um, we can raise that we can show the county. You know, we can do it ourselves, and the money that is there for us can be saved for something more than just housing. We can be saved for buying the land that we can we can, we ourselves can can uh, uh, do the housing ourselves. Like I said earlier, last our last. Um, Meeting, I was talking about uh, coming up with a blueprint for uh, tiny homes. We, you know, we refur refurbish tiny homes that we can, um, uh, tiny home kits that we can, that are ready to go. You know, for for, for um, single or, or you know, adult well, uh, dwellings. Um, but like I said, it, uh, we need paperwork. We need a, a proposal. We need um, people to come together and know, know how to do those things. Um, and I know that they're down there. So, uh, like I said, it's very serious to me. Um, I'll be talking to, I have been talking to the residents there in San Lorenzo. Um, if they come and try to move me, I might move it. I don't know if they're going to, what they're going to, I mean, that's fine. I'm like, what are you going to, are you going to arrest me? Okay. I mean, they're going to arrest all of us. That's against rights right now. I mean, that's our home right now. And unless they have a place for us or help us with a solution, you know, um, then I'd say that they, they need, you know, there's, there's a fighting chance for us. I know a lot of this whole, a lot of the time it's been like a hopeless, you know, like, they're just gonna move us, they're just gonna build us over. That there's no no, it's not a hopeless thing anymore. No like this is this is our family, this is our home, and we need a placement. We need to occupy something or they need to give us something because it's gonna take place. I feel. Instead of being too crazy, right? If you get crazy, this is not a solution.
It is very common to hear people are saying they're going to refuse to leave. And um, and then if you look at how beautiful many of the homes are down there, it's, you know, it just would be heartbreaking to, uh, to bulldoze them. And um, Blue is famous for nice housing arrangements. <laughs> Troy is. I don't see Troy in here yet. Another good job to do. Who else wants to speak from the bench lands? Any more bench lands? People that you want to speak? Anybody want to speak? All I got to say is fuck the police. Okay, cool. And did you lose your hat? Yeah. Cool. Hi, my name is Justin Horton. I've been homeless since Anchorage for about six years now, I guess. It um, so all started, I had a $100,000 a year job with the railroad. Um, some things happened at work. Some accidents and stuff, I guess, the PTSD played off. Anyway, I've been homeless for six years now, and the cops have they've taken everything from me multiple times. Just taken, taken, taken. And I'm tired of it, man. I, I'm over it. You know. That's all I got to say, really. Amen. That's yeah. great. <laughs> you cool? you to speak? I know we got some bench on the people. You want to speak? Okay. Come on, wizard. <laughs> Bring us some wizard dust. <laughs> well, last night the police came to my tent, but they couldn't get out of the cars because they were all smashed by George. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that's two of them were. The other ones didn't get out of the car either. So uh, they were broadcasting, we have to leave our property. So uh, the mock I had the Mockingbird make them go mute. They can't talk maybe for 45 days. And um, the cops came over, you know what that ripped the guts out of three out of four of them, and they're all in the hospital, as far as I know. But George was the one who, who uh, smashed them again, and they're not gonna be able to swine any tickets. So let me tell you who I am. I'm the person that uh, got rid of the IMF. I changed I changed the uh, economic paradigm from tax and war to free issuance. And my company is a free issuance company. Those companies are Bitcoin and those other electronic transfer guys. They all took my ideas. They didn't know how to implement them. There was no phone to call. You couldn't verify. You couldn't do anything. But there are certain people that can issue money. And those are the ones we appoint. So if anybody wants to turn ten dollars into forty million dollars or hundred million dollars, talk to me and I'll help you out. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, come on, there's some more bench managers out there that need to say something. Okay. Whatever, I was just about to leave, but my buddy uh, pointed something out to me, he showed me something. It just came in two hours ago, and this is on his news feed on uh, the Google or whatever. It's from Minneapolis, <clears throat> but it says a federal judge has decided police can no longer destroy property belonging to homeless people. The ruling comes after a 2020 lawsuit on behalf of nine homeless people. They say authorities in Minneapolis and Hennepin County violated their constitutional rights by forcing them out of their encampment uh, or out of, out of an encampment on public property and destroying their belongings. <laughs> Okay, Robert, what do you have to say? I forgot to say, we have to get UCSC on our side because of Delaware one night, I was parked there and an officer tried to get me to leave. And I said, do you not understand what a handicap factor avoids all that? She kind of said yes, but because University of uh, Santa Cruz goes from the railroad tracks all the way down, that they don't want people parking after midnight here. So we need to have people protest the university because they own that whole property lot. As told by the officer, they're the ones that want their the 12 o'clock, no more cars parked here. So we need to have people protest against the university because they're just as filthy as the city. Yeah, they just leave that big that parking lot, huge right, parking right. lot, empty. It's like a state, you know, you have to go to the house. They can turn that into a place, an open land here, because you don't have a car. But 
but the University of Santa Cruz is guilty of part of having people's RVs told, towed, uh, towed because they don't want no one parking after midnight. So we have a friend, um, yeah, then. I was told that by the officer himself when I was there. They didn't they let me stay there because she was like, well, you're right, but you're wrong, but you're right. But because handicapped, you're not allowed to, you have no time frame. And I do have a handicapped flagger, so she let me stay there. But she's the one who told me that the university has a lot to do with the cars, you know, on that street. And that's what everybody needs to know. I never brought it up before, but I forgot. But there's a lot of stuff that I. Uh, so you got to come up here. No, I just want to give a direct response. Okay. Now, just the right university right. is, those people, when there was a bench last, like when I was at Ross Camp, when they were going to court, people were saying, we need to get the university to be on our side. And I, I was out at Ross Camp. But I said, they're not going to be there. They're not going to stick with us because we don't belong. They're another group of people themselves. They don't look down at it to locals here. Now, I'm going up here on the west side myself, back in the 80s, early 80s, 70s, early 80s, when there was homeless people, you didn't see the garbage on the streets. You barely ever saw anybody. But they were there. But now. I just wanted to say to your comment that a lot of the students have been homeless. Right. They're right, right, yeah. Going through the housing right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, a lot of the students are homeless. They have been organized. And part of the issue is we need a group of homeless people who are going to continue to organize. And with the students, it would be a really good idea. They Same thing with them. They end up in their cars, up on campus, in the woods. They get hassled by the police. They get their things taken. They get their lives interrupted. These are paying students. Students are paying right, right, from other states. So I, I, was, I wanted to say that, and I just want to say one more thing, that what's happening here is very unique. This, I've been organizing with homeless people for years and years and years. This is <coughs> unique, and I'm hoping that you all will organize and show up also tomorrow well, and build, build that build that meeting tomorrow to show the city the opposition. Can I say something? I have a problem. Real quick, I, have one real problem. Quick, real quick, I just want to add one more thing, and then I, I, will, I will show that. Is that. I think that one of the things that we need to understand is the people at the bench land right now, if they can take their valuables, and I know this is a big thing, but if they can protect what's most important to them, right. if they can find places to put it, so the cops, I know it's really hard, I just wanted to put it out there, but so that when the cops do come, maybe it's a birth certificate, maybe it's a ring, especially the small bag of maybe we can at least stuff. keep that from getting taken. Right. That's all. Okay. I have a I have a problem with that. But you gotta get I just want to say something real quick, real quick, real quick, before we get off topic, real quick, real quick. Okay. If you just, just didn't just um, witness what I just witnessed, <coughs> we kind of got off topic. Not not that it wasn't um, important what you were saying, but you said we were unique. That we and what was happening was unique. And so right now, what I was portraying, what I was talking to you guys about, was something was wrongfully done to me, right? And then not just me, but a lot of people. Uh, you guys were thinking about, you know what was taking place, the, the bulldozing and maybe the wrongful doing and, and agreeing what was taking place, right? But I believe that the synergy here, or the, just the synergy was taking place, the, the uniqueness was going on. There's always been magic here in my city, in, in Santa Cruz. Magic all, all throughout, whether it's serendipity, whether it's, it's synergy, whatever it may be. But we just had him come back in after he was about to leave, and he gave us an announcement. He said that there was a ruling saying that they can no longer touch our property. That's an answer. Minneapolis. Yeah. Okay. The students was called Sam. Sam something. So, I, so let's not go back and forth for a bit here. Let's get more people to speak because also it doesn't come through very well. I'm watching. And any of you over there want to speak? God bless you guys. Anybody over here want to speak? That's anybody from the bench lands more than wants to speak. Cool. Okay. So. Anyway, question. so now we have more questions or comments from uh, people outside the bench lands. Yes? Was that ruling federal court? I don't know if that, do you, did you feed, see that ruling? He just said it was from, from court. I it was court. If it's a federal court, it's actually somewhat useful for us because that would be another, uh, another circuit. 
If it depends on if it's a, but it might be a district court. But it does show that some judges are starting to somewhat be in other jurisdictions are be open to the idea that it is seizure of your property and so on. So we should, we'll definitely, I don't know where Lisa went, but we'll definitely look into that case and see if we can talk to those attorneys and find out how that was won. Because, uh, so, you know, that, that, this is really important. That eventually, it's mostly going to be us organizing that changes conditions. It's not, and, and it's the only way that the, the actual judges will understand that they have to rule in our favor. The other thing to point out, I think almost everybody would agree that, you know, right now there's roughly 3,000 people living outside in Santa Cruz County. It might be about 4,000, it might be 5,000, unclear. Um, we do know that there's, what, 660,000 um, uh, households that are over two months beyond on their rent in the state. Um, the the uh, rental payments uh, that you get here are for two months from uh, Community Action Network would be a total of five thousand dollars or two months worth of rent to directly to your landlord. Now, some people I've been, I've run to people who actually successfully did get two months rent paid. But if you're laid off in in, in March of 2020, that which many thousands of thousands of people were, then the the eviction uh, moratoriums are ending. And then that means that that's why there is a crisis of, in this winter um, directly of literally a doubling of the unhoused population in Santa Cruz. So if we say that there's only 300 people in the bench lands, which, you know, might be the case, maybe more, um, then, then you can imagine there's like an extra, six, you know, another 300 or 400 people in the next by the next few months that need to also be accommodated with indoor shelter space. Now in 1988, I spoke at the invitation of Robert to, down here at city council when we were getting arrested in San Francisco for feeding people. And uh, I've been feeding people since, uh, um, outside since uh, 1980. And, uh, and I've seen a incre huge increase in number of people becoming homeless between 1980 and 1988 when I moved to San Francisco. And then it just got bigger and bigger. So my suggestion to city council is that they predict, project that there's gonna be more and more unhealthy people. So your solution has to not be for the 500 people at the bench lands today, but to be looking ahead. And in 1988, my suggestion was that they build single room occupancy hotels with a vision of seeing that there's going to be more and more homeless people all the time. And now it could be a cascading of homeless. And even people like uh, Jamie Dimon of J.P. Morgan and so on are all talking about the Great Depression and so on. And what is interesting, the other thing I want to, uh, you know, also say is I spent a lot of time in the bench land, and it is magical down there. And it, it is, it's incredible, the energy in the families. And you could see, and there's many, you can't tell from, walking just down the middle path or up on the bike path, how many people are in those little groups of people. There's little living rooms and, and entertainment centers and kitchens. And, and I mean, there's an entire beautiful community of people down there who have, and, and, and the, the, you know, the struggle to be able to actually somewhat harmoniously survive in a situation where you have you know, people coming in there trying to peddle their wares, which aren't always necessarily the most healthy, and things like that. It's incredible that there isn't more conflict. Um, and, and people, though, do have to police each other in that community, and it can be tough, it, you know, because, it, and, but I've seen it from the beginning of the Benchlands to now, people have really built, like, this amazing community. And so yesterday, when I was going through, the, the entire pathways, all the way from one end to the other, had been raped. And all the garbage had been either placed, and this is with the city ending their trash pickup. The people themselves have really mobilized down there, not with them. outside help trying to get them to do it, just them doing it. Partially maybe because of the threat of eviction, but it has been really impressive. How, and then how well the structures are built, how uh, neat everything is, relatively speaking. And uh, so it, it is a, a really inspiring situation. Now, my personal concern would be it'd be great if it stayed there, but eventually it's going to be a flood. 
And so there's this, that my demand would be to city council that they find a place for the, what will be like six, 8,000 people that is in smaller groups, that people have autonomy, that they, because that's the other thing the city is, uh, you know, I wrote like a thing called um, Santa Cruz City Officials Puzzled by Reality. And that's because they were shocked that they would send people to uh, Overlook and they, three days later, they'd be back in the bench lands and they're like, they couldn't understand it. What they don't understand is we are not children. Maybe 30, 40% of the people living in the bench lands fought in wars for the, for the United States. You know, they, you know, why should they have to be in bed by eight? You know, <laughs> what, what government is telling people that they have to be, you know? And they, they just don't see us as humans. They have spent decades saying we're vermin, we're transients, we're vagrants, we're drug addicts, we're mentally ill. And, and so after decades of that, they, and, they, and they, I call it class blindness, they have no idea that the reality of living outside. And then they make these weird laws that we look at and we're going, how does that in any way relate to the reality of a person that lives outside? Because it's like they're two different, it's like a magical thinking. That was the other one, nowhere land, magical thinking of, um, of Santa Cruz city officials because it's almost like everybody has to evaporate or like, or some reason, you know, just like walk away from the camp and go rent a $2,000 a month uh, studio apartment or something. I don't know what they're thinking. It's just not, well, you have, and then I, we um, have, to, you know, there are a lot of resources that people put like a little bit of their money together um, to do things. As you can see, they're like solar panels. I don't think all of them were stolen from somewhere. And, um, you know, but people are trying to live and it's going to get to be, you know, the experiment that is now called the Benchlands is going to be the future of life for millions of Americans. And so we have to be prepared to work with that reality, because that is the reality. And, uh, you know, so when we will, we will have been out, we've been sharing food outside every day since, uh, for it'll be 900 days on Wednesday, August 31st. <coughs> we've never missed a day. And the city itself did not come through with this, with food and supplies and clothing and things like that for that whole time. So it shows that the people in the bench lands, the people living outside, the people volunteering with Food Not Bombs, we're like the ones keeping this community together and we're getting not only no support from the city, we're being harassed by the city. You know, Joy got a $380 ticket two weeks ago delivering food to the bench lands. Um, Take Back Santa Cruz calls virtually every morning the uh, um, Police department to have our trailer ticketed at, um, you know, at the town clock. We got another, um, you know, yeah, I had to pay another thirty-eight dollar ticket today, and it's just like an endless thing. Yes. Well, I know, I know a sorcerer on a nature road who can do magic to make itself. The parking may yeah, meter right. cannot see whether it's expired or good. I'm it's glad you're going to do that. That's you've <laughs> got to put that together. So. Uh, do it for anybody who wants it. Yeah, I, I, yeah, you should do it. Um, yes, uh, Kazoo and Mike White is my name. Um, people on the bench side are beautiful people. Yeah, and we don't believe in uh, that things should happen like this, but it's happening. They're just cheating people out of. of uh, no matter if you, how much money you have, if you're in a bench lunch, you're there for a reason. Nobody really wants to be homeless, but if you're homeless, you want support. There's no fucking support anywhere in there. Santa Cruz is like mm, better than some, yeah. worse than others, but we need some support. We need help. You wouldn't be there if you didn't need help. We're there because we need help. And people are the community or whatever you want to say, the step above or whatever. Quit fucking us. Yeah. I, it's bad words, bad words I'm saying, but we need help. You wouldn't be there if you didn't need help. No matter why you need help, you're there. And uh, I mean, I'm right along right now. But... <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, people need help down there. But the thing is that people are helping each other. People are security down there. You know, people are, are their solidarity. They're families. It's like a, a lot of people are on the street because they have no family. 
you know? And here they have a family. And, that, and, that's, and that's really important, you know, that the people have. How support that number two chapter? Yeah. yeah. It's emotional support as well as like, you know, and, and, and uh, yeah, it, it's, a, it, it's just, and it, people should get a chance. I like, probably you want somebody like me to walk you through just so that you're, for, people are familiar and don't look at you wacky. But, um, but it's really, it's such a beautiful energy. Yes. Yeah, that, that's probably the most important question you raised there, because you, what is the relationship between homeless people, this group, and the, the general community of Santa Cruz? Right, right. I think, I Why don't you come up to, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the disrespect that I'm getting because I'm where I'm at in the baseline is so unheard of. The disrespect because when I go to another, like, another person or another, whatever you want to call it, because I'm in the bench lines, I'm disrespected? No, it shouldn't be like that. No, no. no. It shouldn't no. be like that. No. Uh, uh, That's uh, what I get all the time. Oh, Trophy, yeah, exactly like Bob said. Trophy. I'm like seen as a downward person. No, I have more money than most of them do because of divorce. I don't get it. But that doesn't mean that I'm disrespectful for them or. Uh, I just don't agree with that. I mean, I'm looked down on because I live on the bench. All right, but this should be the That's one. A, this is really important. Winning, winning the respect of enough people in the community because uh, we as a group will show them a model of what we, what we can do. That has to be a very comprehensive model. It has to be a model where everybody's willing to learn some skills. Everybody wants to be productive, but in, in your own way, in your own design. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people in the community, powerful people who are not content with the way the politicians are handling this at all, believe me. And, and I'm referring to people who own big businesses. They don't want this thing continuing the way it is. That the business people want a solution. They, the property owning class, they want a solution. And we should, we should anticipate that we're gonna to have to work with, uh, with the wealth of the community and the, um, what they call the big stakeholders of the community. Outside of government, it, in a sense, government is incapable. But people who run businesses, people who are running real estate companies, people who are financing real estate um, transactions, if we could just get one or one and a half percent or two percent of those top level property transactions that go on around here, that's a lot of funding. And, and if we're offering a design of something that will work and will keep the peace so that the police will be happy that we're doing this as well, um, you know, we, we, if we build the solution, we'll get the respect and we'll get the funding, believe me. But we have to do it ourselves, citizens, grassroots, okay? <laughs> Do you want to speak? Okay. And then, so, yeah, just raise your hand if you want to speak, if, even if you don't live in the bench line. Cool. Or maybe you live on the left. Okay. Uh, I live in the bench lands. My name is Robert. Um, I put together this flyer, which is really, this meeting is more relevant than this flyer. But the reason I did this is it talks about the city council, what I call the shitty council meeting tomorrow. And it, some of the information is on it. Uh, Keith has sent out some information too, but it's these continued meetings, and it's also, I think, to challenge the mythology that I think some of you have talked about, about that Benchland is a dangerous place. Don't go down there. It's full of drug addicts and junkies who will get you. Uh, you know, you'll be prostituted if you're a woman. Now, I'm not saying that some of these things don't necessarily happen, but that's not the impression we're getting from the folks here and from people who are regular visitors to the Benchlands. I go there at least on a weekly or monthly basis, somewhere there, and I know people who are there. So the question is how to change the mythology. Um, I don't know if I agree with Nick that the last speaker who says appeal to the, you know, the upper 1% and get them to leave only if you're really hard working enough and you prove you're a good person to them. Mythology is a hard thing to challenge. It doesn't really have a lot of rational basis. 
One suggestion that came up at the Huff meetings, this is the group I work with, Homeless United for Friendship and Freedom, is to have other groups who help support community resistance to the last attempt to evade the bench lands in the winter of 2000. There was community members who came out in mass and, and tried to stop that. They were, there was the Comrades Cafe, uh, there was a Santa Cruz, uh, there was Love Boat, we have a representative of Love Boat here today, or at least someone who has worked with Love Boat, uh, Joy over there. We have groups that, that could get together as well who are already sympathetic, who dispute this mythology who say that there's people, actually real people, living in the benchlands who need to be treated as real people. So um, I've, I've got some suggestions about what to do over on that bulletin board if you ever get curious, bored, or cranky and want to check it out. Um, I, I have one suggestion, which is um, you've heard some from Alicia and from Keith regarding, uh, you know, flood the uh, existing shelters and then, so they haven't got an excuse to say, ah, open bid, see, we can send you anywhere we want, get out, get lost, or go to jail, uh, which is gonna be, I suspect, their strategy. They've done this in other cities and they've done it in the bench lands in the past. But another strategy is they're gonna come to you and they're gonna say, here is uh, a shelter for you, will you go there? You don't have to say yes, and you don't have to say no. If you say no, you're shelter resistant. Therefore, you can be written as, we offered him a shelter, he didn't go anywhere. So you might want to use an ambiguous answer when you're asked that question. Another thing to do is something that Wes Whitehear, who is this journalist, who's videoing, will be putting this online later in his John Doe 13K YouTube channel if you want to see it. And I don't know when the, the podcast that uh, Commander X is going to put up, is there a place they can reach that, Commander X? Yeah, I'll, I'll get that to everybody. You put that out, okay. Um, Wes always says to me at the end of, uh, I interview him for a free radio, document, document, document. If you're approached by a police officer and you have some kind of way of documenting, whether it's a friend nearby or whether it's a pencil and paper that you later write five minutes later, what happened to you, the name of the cop, what happened, um, or if you have a, a phone that you can use but looks like an audio device, uh, try to do that because that can help uh, Keith, Alicia, and anyone else is putting together an injunction later. Um, I was trying to circulate last time a series, a listing, for people to uh, let people know if you're in the bench lands where your tent is, if there are people you trust here in this group, that you want to be able to con you to be contacted later so that you can be. But I think that's probably being done independently, so that may not be necessary. Um, let's see if there's anything else I wanted to suggest to you. I have, there is a new thing called Huff, which meets every Thursday. It's a small group, <laughs> usually five to 12 people, but they're at the Sub Rosa, and we supply, unlike this meeting, real coffee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, I'm told that, that you can't do it here because it's, you know, it's, a, it's the rug. They don't want the coffee to go on the rug. So, so, but you know, come, uh, and I don't know about it, you can see it's been suggested you go to the city council tomorrow. That's at 11.30 when city council starts. The problem with the city council meeting tomorrow is the two items that you are, you can read about on the back of this flyer that I gave you, 19.1 and 19.2, are at a time indeterminate. You have to, you're not sure when you're gonna be able to hear them. But there is a, a determinate time, which is at five o'clock, there is a meeting where Keith, you're still calling for people to come tomorrow at city council. There's a thing called oral communication that starts at six. And the point is, it really is to show uh, numbers. The city council is not going to listen to you, but it does go out to the community. So that's what I suggest. Uh, I don't know if I can answer a question, but what is the address of city council? Sorry? What's the address? Uh, it's a good question. It's, uh, the address is right across from the main library. It's at 809 Center Street. We have flyers with the address here. And that's that. Uh, and what is, when, when is your meeting then? The meeting of Homeless United for Friendship and Freedom Huff is every Thursday at 10.45 in the morning until 1 or 1.30 in the, in the afternoon at the Sub Rosa Cafe. And that's 703 Pacific, which is right next to the Bike Church, if you know where the Bike Church is. That's right there. And there's free home. Um, I think that's it. I suggest you look, if you, if you follow Facebook, Keith has posted a variety of photos of the benchlands, which are really uh, 
Well, they, they give the positive side of evangelizing. And I like it. I mean, uh, I, I, I always like to say you want to take the whole picture of the positive and the negative, both. But the positive side is important because so many homeless people I've talked to at Food Not Bombs, I, I'll ask them, what do you think of the bench lines? Oh, the bench lines. I never go there. Not because, so have you ever been there? Do you have any friends there? Do you go there? No, no, I just, I don't want to. It's a mythology that spreads that has to be fought. It's uh, really bad news. And uh, Do you think there'd be some accountability there for women, as opposed to just being randomly out under a bush somewhere where, yeah, you're way more likely to get raped just randomly somewhere than at the bench lines, I would imagine. Yeah, I can't, I can't vouch for that. It has to be people who live in the bench lines who can talk more authoritatively about right. that. But do you think, like, you know, power in numbers, I mean, there's got to be some kind of accountability in a large group like that. And I, I, would, I would, yeah, I would ask if anybody who lives in the bench lines who has a sense of whether women are safer in the bench lines, more accountable in the bench lines than just sleeping alone under a bush, as you say. Uh, uh, you know, the, the mythology is, oh, no, it's much worse because it's the bench lines. You know, I would refer back to the testimony we received at federal court during the Ross camp uh, when we had women, um, Maggie, and we also had Crystal, and we had several women come there and say specifically that it was a safer environment, um, that they actually had been um, or know of women who in the past had gotten sexually assaulted while being on the street un in a bush, etc., cetera, um, because no one was there to witness right. these type of events right. and that the environments where people are allowed to shelter together provide a sense of safety and security that is not available if you're by yourself. And definitely when we have witnesses, right? I mean, the other thing is the city needs to be providing resources. There is uh, supposedly in this upcoming city council meeting authorization that gives a million to abolish the bench lands. There's also a certain amount for uh, trash abatement for the next four months, it says. Wow. So there seems to be some kind of indication that they may be at least claiming that they're going to be doing very slow phasing out. In other words, they'll do the lobster approach. They'll only put you very slowly into the hot water. They'll remove a part of you. Camel's nose will come in and grab a few people out of the bench. And then a few more. It'll be in phases. Maybe they'll make it very, uh, very friendly. But the point is, Resources for people are needed in the bench lands now, is my sense. When I've arrived down there and talked to people, you know, rat problems, fire problems, it can't be addressed if resources are provided, more resources are provided. And so that's something that can be brought up, uh, not so much at city council tomorrow, though I think you should bring it up at protests at 5 o'clock and show up there, 809 Center Street. But throughout the next few weeks, throughout the next few months, whenever you gather together, and we need groups to gather together. Uh, I think there need to be events in the bench lines. I'm not the man to organize them, but there has to be food at rallies. There has to be some entertainment. There has to be stuff that calls in community members, perhaps the way Nick was talking about, which is to say, uh, you know, you want, to, you, want to, you want to invite members of the community who are uncertain. And there's, there are neighborhood groups around that uh, I think I'm not particularly hopeful about, but they do, you know, they do live around the bench lines. They, at least make a token efforts to invite people to their meetings. I think Keith, you and I attended one of their earlier meetings. I think it's called the San Lorenzo Neighborhood, Neighborhood Association. So that's a bunch of ideas that I just want to throw out at you. And uh, I got a couple of these flyers left. If anybody didn't get one, ask me. Did you get a flyer? Cool. If you have a question from me or from you? OK, um, Garrett. Yeah, OK. Hi everyone, I talked earlier. I just want to say we came up with an idea the other day. Um, this is something where we don't have any money for this. And so, uh, but if you all, and I can't, I can't make people interested in this. So if you guys are interested in this, you need to reach out to Keith McHenry and then through him to me. But one of the things I talked about uh, with Keith on the way home from the last meeting is um, I'm very savvy at putting content on the internet. Um, it's one of the things that I do, I do it for a living, and I'm very good at it. Um, I think that if we had some people in the bench lands who 
were knowledgeable about how to stream on Twitch, how to post videos to YouTube, how to post pictures, um, how to work with Twitter and other social media to advocate. Um, you could even, one idea I had was you could even form a Benchland sort of media committee. Um, if you were willing to do that, if you were willing to organize something like that on your own, I would be willing to give up my time and provide classes to help walk you through um, how to post media on the internet and how to make a difference with that media. Um, so if that's something that interests you, get together, reach out to Keys, uh, get a group of yourselves, even if it's only two or three, and I'll be willing to sit down with you. If it's only a few of us, we can do it at a coffee house. If it's more than that, we'll find space to do it. Um, you'll need to provide your own equipment. You'll need to provide your own phones and laptops. I don't have any money for this idea, but if you're interested, I'm willing to give up my time to show you guys what I know. It's very easy to do it with very minimal amount of equipment. You see me, I'm live on television right now with a, with a cell phone. So if you're interested, let me know. Let keep. Right. Okay, so here, if you have a comment, come on up. Okay. Let me pull it up to Yeah. Try this. Yeah, so San Lorenzo Park uh, two years ago um, was a Stop the Sweeps uh, protest. So it was very much like uh, Stop the Sweeps, and it was, they kind of set it up for us, and they didn't set it up for us. It was just that we even caught Andy Mills uh, being asked the question, where do people go? And he was like, oh, they're going to have to figure it out. And that was the best phrasing he could come up with. <laughs> so like that, that, be, that made it very easy for us to arrange to lock arms around the tents. Because then we could be like, you're going to have to come up with something better than that. You can't just say, oh, yeah, well, they're going to they're gonna figure it out. It was literally sweet. It was just kind of like, get out of there. So this time they're being more careful. Um, but last time the message was a lot of the time, it, it really was, where are they going to go? Where are you going to provide for people to go? And uh, that was, uh, that, that was, gave us some really good organizing strength because that was so open-ended. Um, but uh, it, the, the message over the years got boiled down to, with the, T, with the TRO, which, which helped laid in, in block that area, it laid to leave the bench, it, it changed to leave the bench lines alone, if you see what I mean. It, it, got, it got changed from where, what space are you gonna give people to go or where they're able to go to, to uh, leave this specific area alone. So then the, the city goes, oh, okay, and then they make it into a, they see their trap, so then they push everybody into that one area. And like, um, if you look around Santa Cruz and see fences anywhere, there's really a history of protest movements that are basically like why those fences are there. Like Ross Camp and uh, Long uh, Housing Matters and that sort of stuff. So basically like that's kind of one thing we really got to be doing with this is like really demand that people have a safe space to sleep if they're going to, if they're going to make any sort of claim that they're going to move people out. Because right now, likely the, the magical thinking, I guess referring to your article, is likely that um, they're probably going to try to get everybody up into the armory. But that's that's playing, a, the, we got to think like a city manager, okay? If you, if you could take your hand, your claw, and move all the homeless people out of the way, for a time, you can set a precedent in the entire city that homelessness isn't allowed so that all of a sudden it's awkward and hard for people to move back in um, once they're out there. Because if, if people were like out in the armory for, let's say they were able to keep everybody somehow out in the golf lens for a year, um, they build strongholds, they literally have, there's giant buildings go, going up in the city, they fence lots of stuff off and set the precedent so that people couldn't move back in. So that, that would make it really hard and awkward for people to reestablish themselves in the city. And it would and it would be kind of 
making a bet that's like, I bet you're not going to take the shuttle every day to come back to the San Cruz. So it's a, it's a real strong eviction strategy, basically. It's like, pull them away and uh, pull them away and leave them there and then try to build up your defenses so that they, they can't stream back through. So anyway, um, Harvey West held 60 people. I don't think there's anybody in Harvey West right now. Um, Hell's Trail has had strong communities in the past. I don't think it's fenced. Um, Santa Cruz Nutritionals is basically surrounded by what was kind of strong uh, OVO like vehicle presence, but in the back of Santa Cruz Nutritionals, city council has even drawn up maps of, hey, like what if this was an area where a camp went? But the problem is West, West Side Santa Cruz probably has a lot of people that would want to organize and be like, don't you dare come in the West Side. Uh, so Not like, it's, like basically like, um, I don't know, they're like Harvey West definitely in Hell's Trail, but like, I think it's pretty fair to say like, it's, it's fair to be like, we would lock arms around the tents to be like, you can't sweep these tents. If the only solutions you're offering is you need to get on this system where you get car pulled out of town and come back into town. Cause if they did that, like going back to what I was saying earlier, if they're able to do that for 10 months then they could shut down the golf lands and then the whole city is defended. And so it's like, all right, now what are you going to do? And then everybody lost their power. So it's like, uh, um, I think that's what Hoffaker is going to do. I've heard that's what he's done in Watsonville that he'll like, he'll like make that sort of stuff. And if you let people move a little bit, uh, Hoffaker, the city manager, if you let people move a little bit at the t- at a time, you can see what spots they're going to try to relocate to. And I feel like they did this just at Food Not Bombs. They let us leave. Lot 27, they closed down because they wanted to build a big building. So they let us go to a new parking lot and set up for about a week. So that they, they were just like, all right, yeah, get out of here. And then they yeah. set the fences up <laughs> and then came over and swept us a week later. Because it was more easy to sweep us at that point. So it's like, they'll probably do the same. I, I would do the same thing if I was the city manager. So they want to shed as many homeless people from the city as they as they can. I, I believe that. Clearly, seems, clearly. Mm-hmm. they haven't um, done anything to help, so that's obviously the right yeah. I mean, in reality, it would be great if Ross Camp's fences went down because if you think back to what happened with Ross Camp, which was even before San Lorenzo, it's just hilarious that they were causing such a scuffle about a hundred person camp, and now the bench lines has like three hundred and fifty. It's just like it was just people were so mad that Ross Camp was even proposed as a camp, and now the bench lands is like where they're pushing everybody. So, anyway, um, yeah, like Hell, Hell's Trail and Harvey West are open, but I feel like each place in the city is going to have a new fence over the next five or ten years. So, like, really, I think like there's just got to, everybody's got to have a, a question of what's the point where we try to get people to stand together physically and lock arms around. No, you can't do that because the, the city is already trying to negotiate, basically. So, like, just, yeah, we got to think like city managers, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Like, if I was a city manager, how would I long-term try to make it harder to be homeless in Santa Cruz? And, and getting people to shuttle to other places are, are one way to do that. I'm glad the armory will be open. It's good to have 70 spots over there. Mm-hmm. But if they can get everybody way out of the city, that's, that's in, in their favor. So, if there are places that new encampments can pop up and start to thrive in the area and we can, and we can like catch them by the tail and have them be like, we're not going to sweep the back of Santa Cruz nutritionals, let's say, then, okay, there's like, okay, there's a new camp establishment or something. But before that, they're going to, they're going to try to be sweet. Uh, so on the, uh, yeah, Delaware on the west side, Santa Cruz and nutritionals. It's yeah, Ant- Antonelli Pond is like one. It's all about the University of California. I mean, but it's not University of land. It's actually industrial complex. Well, you own that whole pond. You own the pond. Yeah, you lived on the west side for thirty-five they own, years. The old, no. They only they own the old, old Texas Instrument Building. So you got. You own the whole and, pond from the from the Delaware. I lived here for thirty-five years. So yeah, they, they don't they don't own Santa Cruz. All the way to the street, yeah. Where the hotel is, they own that whole block. So Santa Cruz Nutritional is probably one slot over. Well, from the the Did you have the marine lab on the other side? Mm-hmm. The university wanted to put a road up here on uh, Twan Road 
to go back up to the university. I worked on the university up here years ago. I helped build College 9 with Grant. Yeah. So I did a lot of work up here. Mm -hmm. and, and in the past, you used to have the university had your own people. You're always biased to the locals. Thursday is in the locals like me. Used to hate my friends were uh, park ranger stuff. If you were a UCSC student, you were from no state. You're on the beach, and, and your friends were local. He wouldn't get the ticket, but the guy from out of state, he'd give a ticket because we were biased, and that's how it was. People in Santa Cruz. But my own experience in the past as a West Side person myself, that the West Side people were always friendly. We never had a problem. We used to go up to Scott Street. We'd go camp all night. We never had a problem. We never had a litter. The problem is the university is not going to stick by us unless we have some kind of uh, intervention or they are going to support the homeless like the dead plants. Now, Kazoo and I were over there at the dog park about eight months ago, right, Kazoo? A guy comes up to me. We had two tents and an Ananya. My friend's inside the tent. This guy comes up and goes, where are you from? I go, what? He goes, you're not from there. I go, what'd you say? He goes, you're not from Santa Rosa Park. Where are you from? I go, from here. He goes, huh? You might. Okay. So he leaves. My friend goes, what's that all about? Because the other night, we had no bicycles chopped up. Our place was super clean. There were people who would go by, didn't like that we were there, but we were low-key. I like to keep things clean. Because we were there. We were there for how long? When they took everybody oh, off, off, uh, off yeah, the yeah, uh, bed, we got an extra three weeks because we were clean. I mean, we had no good wrap. We were there. We had a TV and everything. That was well, our own team. Well, if you, if well, you, had, a, if you had had stewarded the, like, with that mentality, if, See, you, I'm off if you were able to have but more are people. You the, are you in a camp? Are yeah. you at bed sites? I am. No, I know I, a lot of people there. I, Everybody knows who yeah. I am. But I, I've seen you around. But are you living in a business? No, I, 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 I didn't speak to you. Okay, okay, no, but I'm just saying, where do you live? In my van. Okay, I have that too. See, I'd be bouncing all over. Yeah. But the thing is, I'm knowledgeable. I read of what the city does in your own words, like post things, like they're doing. Oh, yeah, I, I actually just want that. to say, I feel like you could have a can. You could lead a can. I'm saying, like, if you, if well, you had, like, a I was in Boston, yeah. Person. I was here in the yeah. I was the number two person there, and then I would leave. And because of what I did, everybody got to, you know, I got the bathrooms there. I asked, what did you ask? What did you get? I said, give us a place, safe place, and bathrooms. That's all I asked for. And that's what people were giving us stuff. And it was great. But then he got too big, and what I always told everybody, you're going to get too many kids together. Yeah. For safety, you're going to have a fire hazard, and they burn all bridges. Mm -hmm. That's what happened in Alex. Yeah. But down here at, at the fence lands, as everybody don't know, everybody's in a little group. There are a group of people. They're all starting to clean because they don't want them to get, like you said, their stuff. I see so many people get their stuff taken. It's not right. Even going through there, tagging people in the middle of the night. I watch the cops. I'm, I'm, I don't ever sleep really. But I hear all the dates. I wish I could keep videotaping them. But they do go through there. There's people all tents all of a sudden they're there, but their stuff's all scattered all over. Like could could I ask you then? What do you do? You think your next move? You, you don't have to say it in front of the room if you don't want to. It would your next move be to find one of those more stealthy spots where you can just keep the space clean, like on your own, or are you going to try to like? I've had my sister die a month ago. I did kill stuff. I almost got I got killed almost killed on the job. So I'm doing my injuries and doing all stuff. So that's why I'm not. It's I, I don't mind being out here because I can hold my ground. I'm well respected here. No one messes with me. I can hold it. and kazoo. We're all out here. I can walk through each other day and I don't have a problem. People come to see me and see you come meet you okay. And I, I, I'm a helper. I don't ask for help. I don't reply on any of the county, any of the benefits. I take care of myself. I have a clean spot. And I always give these guys crap for making a mess. But in the last few weeks, when they start tagging people, they're coming in statistically. Everybody down there is regulating. Trust me, when a girl gets uh, the boyfriend sitting on them, well, maybe the men are down there, tell them to stop, take off, or they, they take care of it. They do do that. It's managed. Can, they are cleaning their place up. So, can I ask you a question, though? Yeah. Is there, a gen, is there any sort of general sentiment in the bench lands where they say, we just don't, we just point blank, don't want to move? At, I there don't are know, people in the world. sentiment. And the okay. So, so like, the winter's coming. That place needs to be, you know, they need a place for people now. And I'm telling you, Delaware is a good <coughs> spot. You've got the food garden here, it's a huge change. Here, 
You're right about that. I'm not trying to tell you. But I'm a local. I'm a West Sider. I see you. I'm around everywhere. People say, man, I see you everywhere when I walk. But the bottom line is university people and us need to stick together, but they don't really intertwine. And maybe the new group now, but the university has a lot more pull to the, to the city does if they put their foot. I think if the university squeezes on the city, they're going to back up as people from the university help down. So what, and I want to say what, so. I appreciate uh, what you say. So Robert, I yeah. you say. So well, Ali Alicia did a public records act request and got 13 pages, right? And because she was living out in Delaware, and the uh, Manuel Prado, the husband of the chief attorney for Google, who, uh, according to her, her uh, Form 700, has over a million shares of Alphabet, over a million, we don't know how many, how many millions of shares of Alphabet. She's, uh, they spent, Every week, they'll have a meeting with the city manager and the city attorney and the chief of police on how to get rid of homeless people. And they uh, were very frustrated in one of the pages of this email exchange that they are not towing Alicia's RV. What's wrong with them? And they also mentioned that they were very angry they weren't towing my car, which my car has no... You know, it's just a car that's registered with no parking tickets or moving about. You know, there's no. Bridge. So they, so a lot of it is not just the university. We have to be aware of the fact. So, so Manuel is uh, supposedly the the treasurer of Take Back Santa Cruz, and this is a and Google is a huge, huge property speculating organization in our community and plays an oversized role and plans to get rid of, of homeless people, but there are many other plans too. I mean, they're, they're part of the police state operation, you know, that's what their job is. Can you ask me? And you had one, let say one thing. Well, I just wanted to remind everybody too, that a couple years ago, because that area is good, it's industrial, yeah. there's the large strip Delaware where RVs could park. So if you remember, I did suggest that that area be opened up and that the signs be taken down and RVs be allowed to park there 24 hours a day for up to 72 hours at a time because they put, and they actually don't, the city doesn't even have permission, but from the Coastal Commission for the signs that they have there. But there's been no enforcement from either side to take them down. But if those signs were removed, people could park there for 24 hours at a time, 72 hour limit. Um, and that would be perfect, but a bunch of people came out, don't trash natural bridges, you know, with their signs, mm -hmm. and Drew Glover proposed that that be a, you know, a site that that could actually go on the agenda and be voted on, and you know how that turned out. He ultimately ended up recalled, and, you know, all the people on the west side were like, no way. So mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely a good location. I think it could actually handle the scope of with the side streets as well, Swanton and um, I think uh, there's Schaefer. There's some sh streets over there that actually could handle our RV homeless population capacity, but the city just will not go for that. Yeah, and they can do things like, for example, in the benchlands, they could have actually set up permanent showers. Yeah. They could have actually had real toilets. They, we, we, the reason there's a water tap down there is because we have to negotiate the federal court to get the water tap. And the reason that the water tap is as high as it is is because the public works guy that I was working with realized that probably made sense to have it higher. And he went and got another pipe and made it higher. But it wasn't, it was like, it was, uh, you know, the, the Union of the Homeless and Food Not Bombs that were, figuring out how, you know, what should be happening and we're going, getting a federal judge to back us up. So all, but they could have had, we tried to get showers, we tried to get, you know, much more services. Um, and then of course, this idea of the case managers going through and, and you know, taking down all this data about you, giving you a, a number, and then you never get anything. You know, it's, it's just surveillance of homeless people, basically. They're, yes. Uh, <coughs> sorry. I have two questions. Yes. Uh, um, 
I guess there were comments and a question. One is I really appreciate that this meeting, um, this meeting being held as a way to have sort of interface between folks who are living in the bench lands and folks who aren't. Um, and, uh, and I really appreciated the heads up on this meeting. We knew about it about a, a week in advance and started seeing it. And I'm thinking that um, plans for going forward would probably be clarified based on what the city council says tomorrow. Correct. And I'm wondering if there's a, uh, if there is a plan or could there be a plan to meet here again next Monday? Um, yeah, we can do it again next Monday. Yeah. Great. And I wonder, <coughs> did you say that you're paying for this space? Yeah, we have to pay. We pay twenty five dollars an hour for this space. Okay. And so there's a when there's a food on bombs meeting that happens at five o'clock. Yeah. At five or six every Monday, and we need cooks and volunteers. To, you know, but we, we, you know, we've been out there nine. We'll be out there nine hundred days at the end of the month. Uh, it's in, you know, we share food every single day, 12 noon. There's many logistical hurdles. We're preparing for there to be cuts off and food, disruption in food um, this winter. So we need a lot of help with that. And then we, and because we're already here and it's walking distance from the bench line, we decided we would just hold the bench line meetings uh, the, after the Food Not Bonds meeting. So, um, and we can keep doing that. It would be great if somebody wanted to donate $25. <laughs> but um, because that's also the other thing that's happening is Food Not Bombs is getting less and less money as more and more people become homeless because and poor because the most of our money comes from five and ten and twenty-five dollar uh, subscriptions on PayPal and things, and that's been getting disrupted. Like our PayPal account just suddenly disappears and then comes back and things like that. So there's um, issues surrounding that. So um, so yeah, you know, we're, we could do do more of this, and we seem to be getting bigger groups each time. Yes? To address the stigma, I was wondering if you considered, like, maybe having committee members invited to present plans as an event instead of our city. So, like, you said, like, if somebody wanted to get a part of the bench line, they could go and get a and plan to make some of the stigma. Well, you know, the best thing to do, I think that's a good idea. The best thing to do, if you're uh, able to come on Wednesday here at 1230 in the parking lot, you can help us load our vehicles of the um, pallet, the food that we get from Second Harvest, and help us distribute it in the bench lands, and we can walk through the bench lands with you um, on, on a Wednesday at, in the afternoon. And, you know, of course, if you're bringing food that and you're, they're, they're, you're helping unload and so on into a, you know, JV's kitchen or into a Mama Shannon's pantry, um, you know, then you're, yeah, it might be a great way. And, if, and, I, and I, to meet people and to get to see the place. And then I'd be happy to walk up and down and introduce you to people and so on. So, like, for instance, if you saw in, in uh, Lookout magazine, there was a... Um, a story and it had like Billy's video in it, Mama Shannon's video, uh, Blue was in it, um, Jasmine was in it, I think Neil was in it, and I would, basically what happened is I took this reporter Judy, uh, Jody and then a, another friend of mine who I originally introduced to the bench, then Kevin, uh, and I introduced them to people and took them around and they did that documentary was, was published uh, this, I think, maybe yesterday on, uh, and, and so, and uh, it's 1230, we love the, around 12, 1230, we love the vehicle here, um, and uh, and then I drive down to the bench lands, and then they give me the $380 ticket, which they only have done once, and then they fortunately never showed to the court, so nothing in the end up happening, but then Joy got threatened with being towed really viciously uh, two weeks ago, and uh, then sent to the, up to the, um, you know, the parking, the, the uh, bike path where she got the $380 ticket. So, yeah. And then Elise had something, and you, the wizard had something, and that, and who else had some, what, I'm trying to make sure the people that haven't spoken much get to speak first. Anybody from the, the new arrivals from the bench line want to say anything? There's three people over here. We apologize for our tardiness. Yeah, did you want to speak to the community about anything? It'll be a live streamed and also a YouTube video? Uh, not this guy. Okay. No, I'm not. Okay, and, and 
So the big thing news for our newcomers is we're going to meet at tomorrow, 5 o'clock at City Hall. And we need everybody out to 5 o'clock at City Hall. And then next week we'll do this again at uh, 6 o'clock. Um, yes? Sorry, guys. No problem. What's the purpose of this, these meetings? So the purpose of this meeting is to build strategies for um, people for resisting the eviction or an orderly moving of people to real safe places for them to live. And to for the house community to get a sense of what the actual reality of the bench lands is. And to get and to be humanizing people, you know, make it possible for people to see that these are real humans that have real lives that really deserve the dignity uh, and not be just pushed out into the doorways. So that's, that's what the focus on is. Yeah, Mark. Keith, what are your expectations for the council meeting? So tomorrow we're supposed to hear um, a proposal by the city manager. Of, um, they're trying to have $1 million from homeless services uh, diverted to uh, Restoring the bench lands, and then two hundred and eighty, uh, two hundred thousand dollars, two hundred eighty thousand dollars for garbage removal over the next um, four months from the bench lands. So they're being cagey about uh, all the different details of of clearing the bench lands, and they're trying to work around. So by us announcing last week that we're organizing, preparing a temporary restraining order, and and. In, in, you know, depending on the conditions of what's happening, then we're prepared to do another temp TRO like we did that's now resulted in the bench lands existing. Um, they are trying to figure out ways to navigate our threats against them. So that's what the purpose of, of these meetings are. And then, okay. Oh, yeah, Lisa, yes. and then Wizard. Okay. Um, the way I see it, this is an organizing meeting. <laughs> homeless people need to organize ourselves. I've been to umpteen panels. I've been homeless. I've been to umpteen city council meetings. And uh, the, the consensus that people come to is that we have to organize ourselves. So what does that mean? We're here tonight. They're winning still in getting people to die off from illnesses and improper care, exhausting people. When people don't have a home like the Benchlands, you walk around all night. Gee, can I sleep under that bush like I used to do in Berkeley? Gee, maybe I can sleep under that stairwell, right? But homeless, homeless people's voices don't make it into the Sentinel. This is what I went through. Yeah, I was used to walk around, you know, all the streets in Berkeley, exhausted, tired. My family had basically rejected me because I was challenging the domestic violence in the family. Okay? And they got really angry. So I had to make choices. And this is what's happening to, as people have said up here, to everybody who's homeless. Things have happened. The economy isn't supporting people. It doesn't give you enough pay to pay the rent. And they're, but they're getting away with this narrative. City Council, I can tell you about all their tricks, how they take over our meetings endlessly. Uh, they'll Skype in a consultant. One, this is one of the last, last things I saw before I started disrupting actively in City Council meetings. They'll, they'll Skype in a consultant who's not even there, and that person will drone on for 20 minutes talking about one eighth of this and a percentage of that and blah, blah, blah. And I look around the room, people are falling asleep. That, that, that meeting was packed. This has gone on for ages and ages. People die off, they get sick. Maybe they get moved somewhere, maybe they get a piece of land to squat on or a relative's garage or whatever. We have got to come together. That's what we're doing tonight. That's what's happening at the Benchlands.
The Benchlands is an organization of people who are helping each other survive, defying the really messed up unjust laws, the unjust system. Do you know how much money we pay to have Walmart go in to set up their camp? Do you know we pay often for their paving, their plumbing, their lights, their street lights? Do you know how much we're subsidizing, uh, subsidizing the rich to be so rich that they can't even make money off of their money? I mean, this is so important. So what I'm trying to say, and the reason I wanted to speak here tonight is because this woman here who is talking about women's safety, we need to change the narrative that, uh, by the way, Chief Mills used to, <laughs> he, he loved that Seattle dying video that was a hit piece against homeless people, always, always depicting homeless people with trash, always depicting homeless people as drug addicts. What about the house drug addicts? These are people, these are our people. We're just starting. I'm so jazzed by seeing people talk about their dignity, talking about they matter, talking about where they're from, what happened to them. We need to take the narrative from the haves and shut it down. We've heard enough of it. It's the same crap over and over again. They're all trashy. They all don't know how to live. Like Keith said, they're not treating them like human beings. So I just wanted to get up here and I'm literally shaking because I'm an organizer. I'm an organizer against injustice. I could have been a nice gentleman, womanly lady. I thought I'd do a little activism on the side. Screw that. They're taking everything from us and handing it over to the rich and getting richer. These people care nothing for our welfare. And it's up to us. I'm not talking about your average person in a house. I'm talking about the rich. Their plans for what they want to do to downtown Santa Cruz, build these crazy 22-story high-rises. They just want to bring more rich people in here. So if we don't stick up for ourselves, if we don't defend ourselves and say, look, we are worth it, we matter, we are not going to let you just take a apart this camp, show us where you're going to live, uh, show us where you're going to give us a decent place to survive until you build the housing. And I want to see it staffed. I want to see it staffed by people who are able to hold that job and help other people get their showers, get their bathrooms. How many bathrooms are you going to build? How many showers are you going to build? How many meals a day are you going to start providing for our people that you've robbed and just giving this money away to the rich? I've been watching this for years. I'm fed up with it. Last thing, and then I'll stop. I have a friend who's real wild. He's creative, artistic. He gave me this idea, and I thought, wow, that's too weird. It just won't work. But I'm going to put it out there because over time I thought, well, at least it's a place for people to go to while we force them to build housing for the lowest of income, for the poor, instead of these massive dis really ugly buildings that are so insensitive and then having it all go to people from out of town who are rich, okay? I'm sick of this. So look, my friend suggested we get one of those big circus tents. I'm sorry for the image. I don't mean to be degrading here, but you know those really, really huge, huge, huge tents? They hold like a thousand people or more. <laughs> Maybe we could get one of them up to pogo net and say, we're not going anywhere until you give us a place where we can all have a roof over our heads, where we don't have to get in line for some stupid van that takes all day to get us to a place and then we can't look for a job because we're waiting in line to get a van to go to your ridiculous outfit there, this gravel place that Keith is talking about in the armory. So this is how... This is how we take back our resources, our government, and our land, and we say, no, we're not going to put up with your utter, complete, silly, magical thinking anymore until you show us the solutions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, if you have something to say, you want to say something, then we're going to have to wrap it up, but we need to see everybody tomorrow, 5 o'clock at City Hall. And then next week uh, here at 6 o'clock,
Okay, and then there was there one other, you had your comment as well, right? In the back? Somebody raise their hand. Okay, cool. Okay. Okay, well, okay, he's going to do the spell that changes everything. So, thank you for your assistance. Okay. If, if you know who is uh, rich people behind the city officials who are coming after 10 people, let me know who they are. I have the Dark Magicians Consortium teach them lessons. And uh, they won't kill them, I don't think, but they will make them lose their money, or lose their interest in hurting people. They will go away after the dark magicians take care of them. So you let me know who these people are, and they will be put an end to. Okay, then Greg is the last speaker. Greg is the last speaker. Okay, Greg. All right, Greg. Uh, good evening. Sorry I'm late. Um, there's some kerfuffles going on at, uh, at the camp. Um, but it's important to get here. Uh, <sighs> not that we can't handle um, it. The question is, is like, you know, to what extent do we want, what, how much do we want to handle in our camp, and how much do we want to because you know, it's not a, an infinite thing. Um, we need to, you know, and I was just speaking with some people from the, uh, the neighborhood association um, that are, just want the camp to go back to a park, which we do too, but it's, you can't just invite us in and then just dump us. Um, I mean, it's, it's the most absurd thing. And if, um, if the uh, city really wants to go toe to toe um, in terms of uh, a logical ar argument, I mean, we've, we can turn them inside out. Um, but, but we're honorable people. And uh, we don't, it, oddly enough, we don't have any, there's not much hate that gets developed despite us being, you know, marginalized and stuff. We, because we've been. You know, hated, and we don't care about hating. We just want to find a way to um, have a place where we have stability to move, to have a platform on which we can move forward. You know, I mean, we just need stability to even begin to think about possible futures. And we have not been given that. You know, I mean, uh, it, the possibility is if we had not been stifed with their rumor mongering, you know, every single week, there's for the past 14, 16 months, oh, they're going to be closed. Don't, don't worry about that. No, we're, shh, here we are. Um, and they, and, and here they've come up with nothing. Um, that's, that's equitable, um, you know, like a Mark versus, or a, a yeah, Martin versus Boise, one-to-one, -one, bed for bed solution. They've come up with ridiculous, half-assed attempts. And we've got nothing to lose except that we, except that we're not quitting. We don't quit. Um, these are survivors. My friends out there were survivors and um, we're not gonna quit. But it would just be nice to be given the honor of just straightforward um, sharing of honest information. No games, no bullshit like um, Sonia, Mayor Sonia's um, letter, um, the most absurd. Uh, it wasn't evil, but it was just logically pathetic and in terms of truthhood, truthiness was lacking. Um, we're, man, I mean, I, to be honest, people are, are confused. They don't, we don't know what to do. I mean, I, I know what, but I'm heavily involved, but a lot of people, it's, it's, it is, people are mystified, like, well, what are we going to do? And a lot of people don't even know that they can go into a, a city hall, um, a city council meeting, 
they don't know that they can come to, they can participate in different things. They, they feel, uh, I feel marginalized, but um, that's just something that we need to educate each other on. And um, uh, if people knew what our potential was just for, you know, just doing our own thing without having like superheroes like uh, Keith and Alicia and Robert and everybody like that. Um, Anybody out? Any superheroes? <laughs> <laughs> um, there's many, but um, but we, as the actual residents, have the capability, um, and but we do need to care enough and listen and, and listen to the opportunities, and then come forward and participate. And it's really hard, but it's beautiful to see people that. You know, I've got some cynical friends and neighbors. I love them to death. But um, if they just get to bite off a little piece of something and see, oh, wow, we can affect the government's action on us. I'm not a helpless victim. I'm not a recipient. If they can just get that little bite and then feel what it tastes like to, to have you don't win completely, but you have that feeling of I'm engaged, I'm involved, I'm I have power. People have power. You know, power of the people. And um, that's what we're gonna and um it gets frustrating. But um but but having people that show up and you know, I remember the first time when I was getting kicked off the beach and I discovered Huff and found that I do have some power, I do have a voice, and I want to share that. But um, thank you everybody for coming, and, and uh, let's rock and roll. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, thanks for coming, and I hope everybody will come tomorrow, 5 o'clock at City Hall. And, uh, we, and so Greg, was, uh, Greg could be considered the mayor of his section of the bench lands, and he'd been down at the whole dang time. And so, that was a good way to close the meeting. And if you want to keep talking and chatting outside so that Tom can close this down and go to bed, that will be cool. Thanks. Thank you, Keith. Yay.